Thank you, John. You're welcome. <coughs> so, we are planning on. We've got to convene moving. a meeting. We got to, okay, so the meeting, the meeting will. What's the word? Convene. Convene. Yes. All right. Not yet. We got to start. I'm going to open open the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Meeting's open. Okay. And, make a motion uh, that meeting's we. Meeting's open at six o'clock. John, make a motion. I make a motion that we move over to Frontier Regional High School while keeping this meeting active and then reconvene here at the conclusion of our meeting with Frontier Regional High School. Second. Motion is moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. Abstain. Okay. Okay, we are reconvened. First item on the agenda is the minutes from, uh, what's, it, what's the date, 26? Uh, 26. I apologize for where the staple is. I went, that happened to me once, too. Uh, I have my right and my left missed That's up. Diana. They, she gives classes. I know. <laughs> See, what are you going to do? I meant the other left. Yeah, change it. Try to open it a couple of times. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. <laughs> so, make a motion. We approve the uh, agenda, not the agenda. The uh, minutes. Minutes. Any questions on the minutes? We have a minute to look at the minutes. Okay. Let's not get carried away. Is, yeah. I'm confused by the dates. Oh, again? I missed that. It says FY18 budget, FY request recommended. Oh, I, I'm sorry, FY19 again. We took the 18 no, budget back. FY20. About 20, I mean. I went back to a, an old one. I'll change that entirely. It does say FY20 on discussion item, but what does it say 18? Do you have a place, John, that says 18? Um, all these headings. All oh, the headings, okay. The headings up here. Okay. Am I looking at the wrong thing? Is it me or is it? Uh, I don't have any heading to say 18. Huh? I don't see any. On the items where there's the account list, yeah, it just okay. says FY18. Okay. I think it's on each of those parts. Yeah. Okay. I'll do a search. <clears throat> okay. FY20. Yeah, I got it. I, that's what I, yes, I got it now. I went back to the 18 format. I forgot to change it. So we invent the wheel. <laughs> it was easy a discussion. There was a lot of discussion. So. Okay, it looks like our minutes up. I'll second the motion with the <laughs> correction. Okay. So we have a motion. It's been moved, seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Extensions? Unanimous? Yep. Okay. Seven zero one. Okay. Seven zero one. Zero. Seven, seven zero, zero, zero. zero zero. Jesus, John, you're too quick tonight. He's having trouble with that <laughs> addition too. Trying to become the chairman. I think he is. Yeah. I think he's gonna be the chairman. He is. Uh, Brenda. Yes. What would you like uh, first? Pardon? Uh, Which? Well, Beth Foley is here from okay. Tri Town Beach in the swim program and. So we have her on the agenda first. Right. I say yep. I say we go ahead and start with that. 
Um, she doesn't, I don't know that she knows any of you. No, nope. so no. it's going to, so I'll let you introduce yourself and then we'll go around this way. Okay, I'm Beth Foley. Um, I've been a commissioner, I think I'm going on my sixth summer start, um, so I am happy to help you with some information. So. I'm Allison Yandelman. John Bereski. Bruce St. Peter's. Jeff Alton. Skip Olmstead. John Pachok. Bruce Hunter. Hi. Yeah, you want to repeat those? Yeah. <laughs> John and Bruce and Skip. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll just make a quick comment on the uh, swim program and the Tri Town Beach. The, at least the concern that I had uh, is the clarity of the water, I guess. The concern over the water and, and the, the fact that all too often I see carload order of geese that have taken refuge here, mm -hmm. moved in. Uh, so if you can sort of sure. speak um, to that, at least in, in the whatever other concerns. Sure. The first year I started, um, we had closed the beach. I think it was three or four days for contamination based off because of the geese. Um, but for the past four summers, we haven't had to close the beach for... Um, any water contamination there's we test it um, weekly and we've had no reason to close the beach the past three years we haven't closed for weather as well so we're we're really under it's under control the geese tend to get really heavy towards the end of the summer in August so we have closed the beach around August 18th because I think the first year we went a little longer and we found that that was the week that was one of the worst weeks so we kind of moved it up, and we haven't had any issues with water, with any contamination. You know, the guards will scare the geese away when they start coming, you know. Um, but it hasn't been a problem. Um, the first year it was, but for the past four years, it has not been an issue to close the beach. Which makes sense. You're closing it earlier. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we're closing a little earlier, giving the guards. Most are college kids are going back to school, so we have a staff issue. So... Um, we tended to wait to the second in the middle of the third week. What budget item are we talking about? Uh, 630-5400 and 630-5400. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if we're, um, if we're closing the beach earlier, <laughs> I'm a little confused now that there's an increase in salary collection. So there was an increase from last year and the year before, and it the, went down in 2018. Is that when you started reducing the closing early? Oh, you're talking about which one are you talking about? Swim program or Tri Town Beach? Tri Town Thanks. Beach. Um, the the. Um, so when minimum wage went up, I yeah, know. minimum wage went up. So they so they chose to raise the rates so that they could get the lifeguards to come. For this year and um, this last summer, sorry, I'm speaking no, for you. Right um, this last summer, they came into this um, seaweed or some kind of some kind of a weed problem that was yep. coming up through the water, and they were having to use a lot more manual labor to try to get that off of the beaches or beach. It was in the water, so it was it was coming from the furthest point of the pond, and it was it would go to the surface and then be pushed to the swim section. And we would spend four to six hours of, of four guards at the time continually scooping it up, putting it, and bringing it to the beach and making piles so that the area was clear and safe for the kids to swim. So in fiscal 20, we budgeted a little more, more for that particular purpose. Okay. We budgeted a maintenance item, increase the maintenance. The hours spent, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> The other question that I had um, relative to the Tritown Beach in general was the accounting issues that we've, we believe that there, um, we might have, uh, everything seems to be a cash transaction. Mm -hmm. We're concerned about that. We were concerned about that with our landfill also. Mm -hmm. We changed that to a check only. Um, we'd like to have some other way, at least some thoughts on how you can get away from the use of cash. 
Um, cash tends to be come from the elderly population of the beach is generally um, where we see a lot of that. Um, people would love us to take credit cards, but we don't have that option. I mean, we're not opposed to people writing a check or possibly getting a money order. Um, I think we're going to get some pushback from the elderly population yeah. on that. Um, and they do, they do purchase a lot of our passes for their grant because they can pass it on to their. They can bring their grandchildren. Um, so they purchase a season pass. Yeah. With cash. Yes. Yes. So our tickets are numbered, and the number has to be on the receipt that we give them. We have a pretty detailed receipt and the guards have to um, they're responsible for those at the end of when bill will come and collect mid-afternoon um, so that there's not cash left over um, in the the guard house that is locked um, so he takes the majority of it every day and then he deposits it at the I think weekly okay he brings it and um, I, I understand there's two accounts Yes. Oh, okay. Okay. I, I, that's not, where. Th yep. Yeah, to that's where I'm. Bill's not here, so I apologize. He's. Um, I. <laughs> I was. I was only aware of. of one. The checkbook in the account that the town keeps. Oh. Okay. So, the, the money that's deposited with the town is in a is in a um, special revenue fund, and that's Comes here. specifically for the swim program, which is just Deerfield. So. Just Deerfield for the swim program? No, Deerfield, else? Only Deerfield residents for the swim okay. program, right? Correct. Yeah, most of most of our swim, well, we didn't have the swim program last, last year, year, but in, in history, it was most of River Valley camp. Um, there's, their campers come, and they are most, mostly where the swim program came from. They, we'd have 30 to 40 kids join the swim program during their camp time that they're there. And then we probably had about 20 students that would come early in the morning and later. So um, River Valley is uh, a camp in Deerfield? Yes. School. Elementary school, elementary school camp? Yeah. <coughs> and they, they take kids from all around, I think, in the summertime. From yes. Four school. Yep, four yeah. school, four the school. The whole district, okay. yeah. Um, so there is, that money goes to a checking account and then transferred to the town? Was no, that one's, that one's deposited. It, she brings the money into Sarah, okay. and Sarah deposits the money. So the, the other seasonal passes and day passes, that money goes where? Well, that's the Tritown Beach, and the Tritown Beach goes into a, a checking account that's in Barbara's control. In Barbara's control. Mm -hmm. okay. And that money is deposited from... A, a weekly or monthly receipts? I, I don't know how often. I know you had a conversation with her the other, the other day. I don't know if, if you talked about that I kind of thing. I didn't get into that, but I do have a couple of questions. For you, so. okay. 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 That was, was my concern oh. that we had a good accounting system set up for both programs mm -hmm. and that we could account for um, all of the all the money that was coming in was being deposited. Right. We want to make sure that was the case. So, to my, so the swim program didn't happen last year, so the, the passes that were collected, the money that was taken, everything should have matched the receipts and the tickets are, are matched. We do give out a few free tickets to some, I can't, I think there's some few tickets, like maybe 10 tickets that we give as complimentary tickets to That's people. Right. But otherwise, they all should be. And if the kids happen to you know, miss a ticket, Bill's usually on top of them about sure. not missing the ticket. Yeah. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Sure, go ahead. Um, OK, um, I realize that two of them are intertwined, but the Tritown Beach, I'm looking down through the uh, thing here. And there's a line item here of uh, salary under expenses of $500. Uh, what is that for that's not in the upper one? Where's this at? Uh, the expenses to come from revenue on the uh, 630 54 10 page. You think it's used anymore, right, the last couple of years? Pardon? It's not in there anymore, right? No, it's a, I, I, it, um, I think at one point in time, Doug, Doug brought in the income so you could see what the what is being purchased with that. Um, but I don't, 
I don't have access to that and don't and there wasn't really any time to put that together and I didn't feel like it was important. So I account for only the expenses that are part of the appropriation for Tritown Beach for us and for Waitley. Well, well, that's what I'm saying, but you've got a uh, $500 uh, for 2015, 2016, and 2017 under uh, salary. Under salary. I don't know what you're talking about. And, well, there's, there's nothing in 18, 19, and 20. Um, right. what's, what's the date on your uh, uh, 212? 212-19, okay. right, right here. I have 212-19 also, but I'm not, I'm not seeing what you're seeing, but maybe I'm... prior years, Brenda. Oh, you're talking about here? Oh, yes. I have no idea. Oh, yeah, so that, that no longer exists at this point. That's that's out of my purview. They, we know that there is money collected uh, for the Tri Town Beach, and it's doing. submitted into that checking account. And yeah. we know that there's expenses paid out of that checking account. I have no idea. Okay. It's not my my purview to know. The only thing you take care of is a swim program only. Well, as far as the town goes, the, as as the specifically town goes. the town, it's the swim program. And the town clerk. Takes care of Tri Town Beach. Well, there's certain expenses for Tri Town Beach that come out of the appropriation, and those are listed there. But the things that are paid out of that checking account, I don't know. And and that would be something that either Bill can tell you or maybe Barbara could tell you. But you can see what they've been spent on in the past or what they had intended to spend them on in the past. So what we have here is a list of revenues, but we'd have no line item for the actual income. Right. Uh, and that's part and parcel with the concern, I believe, of the committee is, is you know, you have these revenues, but nobody has uh, given us some idea of what the actual income, other than approximately 150 people show up there, and uh, to see whether the it's used totally to offset the... Uh, uh, budget and the other thing is is this is kind of a dual question you have um, entrance fees for the Tritown Beach mm -hmm. now is there separate entrance fees for the swim program the swim program used to collect money from anybody who joined they would pay a fee okay so that's a separate fee then the pass yes it is okay so the okay. pass so they, so they have to buy the pass to get into the swim program well, most of our most of our swim program came from our camp, and so that there was no pass needed. Um, we get we get paid by River Valley five hundred dollars for the summer, for the five six weeks. I, I think it's six weeks that they come. Yeah. Um, and then they can pay an additional. I think it's five or ten dollars to do the swim program, at the beach. Oh. Um, and that money was deposited separately from anything else. Yeah, but there's no there's no accounting for what the revenue was on that also. Well, the the revenue the revenue for the swim program went into the special revenue fund. Okay. Okay. And that's still on the that's that's still here. Okay. okay. And and so you can see on the swim program that in the last couple of years I reflected that we would be paying some of some of those expenses for the swim program out of that revolving fund. Because the revolving fund had had gotten large enough, and and we had never used it, so that's why at one point in time we discussed that, and I started started reducing our appropriation based on what I think we could reason, reasonably take out of that. That'll obviously decrease as the years go on because we only take in about fifteen sixteen hundred dollars for the swim program into that special revenue fund. Okay. Okay. My other question is, you said you have two accounts. I have sheets showing three accounts, I believe. One, and they're all Tritown Beach. So one is... I have no idea what you're talking about. Uh, one is a statement from January 1st to January 31st, 2019, from the Massachusetts Municipal Depository Trust with a balance of $1,096.34. Another one from uh, bank, uh, East Hampton, I guess that's the East Hampton Savings Bank, which is listed as a government sub-account, whatever that is. No. 
that has a statement of January 1st to January 31st, 2019, of uh, $1,758. And another one from People's Bank that is a December 31st to January 31st, 2019 statement that has a balance of $2,279. Uh, $2,279.51. So I guess my question is, why all these accounts and what are each one of them used for? You're asking us questions oh, that neither of us have any answers okay. to. Okay, and then uh, a fourth account with Greenfield right. Savings mm -hmm. Bank oh, yeah, for $797. Yeah. So did you hear what I said? Uh, no. You're asking questions that neither of us have oh, answers okay. to. okay, all right. We know nothing about that. Can I ask you a question about the audit? Tom Scanlon still does the audit. Yes. Does he do the audit for the SWIM program only? And not that I know of. Does he do he it? Does, he does an audit for the town. The town, that's included in the audit for the town. Okay. Now, every, every other uh, organization in this town pays an administration fee to the town if the town is handling all this. Does the Tritown District as, as well as the SWIM program? No, because it's not a separate fund. It's in our, it's in our general fund. Can you use the microphone, please? None of us can hear you. Sorry. Thank you. Okay, well, I guess... Oh. On the SWIM program, this thing shows expenditures for 2019. Yes. Okay. But the SWIM program uh, did no, not we don't, run. There, there aren't any expenditures for 2019. Summer exactly. SWIM program says 2019. And it shows five thousand forty dollars for the head instructor. Thirty-nine. That's, that's what we had budgeted. It's budget. It's budget. We haven't expended anything. It's five thousand eight hundred and ten dollars is still in there. Would have gone to free okay. cash. Yeah. Well, that's it will. Correct. It will if it's it not will, yeah. at the end yeah. of the year. Right. Mm -hmm. Is I every other department. Um, is your expenditures are accounted for probably through you, but there's a portion of the Tritown Beach that's expended and nobody sees what it's being expended for. And I have to, I, I have I, to I, only surmise that that was set up that way because it wasn't strictly a Deerfield thing. I, I don't know. I, Personally, I think that we should at least get a report mm -hmm. of what's being spent. If not, not to add work to you, but... Well, I well, can't do no, anything it's, about it's, it anyway. It's, the, it's really the town treasurer's... Okay, but right now there's no... Not the town treasurer, town clerk. No, town treasurer. The town. The town Somebody in the town same person. should be watching over the expenditure of this money, and I don't believe anybody is. I don't think so. I don't. Hmm? I mean, I would, yeah, really. You're talking about Barbara. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, but there's no report to her, right? This other person, I forget his name, is taking the money in, and he's spending it as he sees fit. And I'm not saying he's doing anything wrong, but I think... Well, I think we he. Ought to I see think. Where it's going. I, I don't know for sure, but I. I would assume he's submitting the bills to Barbara, and she's paying them. So I know if if she's paying them, she's looking at them. That's okay. what Barbara had told me. Yeah. yeah okay. okay. All right. Fair enough. So, what is your program for this year on the swim program? Are you going to go out and advertise and hire an instructor? We are. Can run it. We are trying desperately. We have lots of resources out there. We have to find a certified um, instructor and right. it doesn't seem there's many people that are certified or are willing to do. We, we can only offer it on, you know, Monday through Friday and at a certain times. So we've struggled to have anybody kind of take over the program. So do you think you're going to be able to accomplish that? Because it makes a difference whether we voted or not. Um, well, we certainly would like to. Um, I, I can't. It's it's March, and we're we're you know now is when we start to really look for instructors, 
and guards um, that we need positions we need to fill. Um, we've been trying since mid-February to get feelers out there um, to see if anybody would be interested. And, and this budget does go into the end of June for 2020. Right. So if, if we don't have the SWIM program this year, maybe we'll have it in 2020. So there needs to be something voted, yeah. you know, with the idea that that might happen. Skip, do you want a motion? Yes. Uh, Talking about the summer swim program only. Okay. I'll make a motion that we approve the budget for $6,310 for the program 630-5400 for the summer swim program only. Second. Okay. Motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Uh, just one thing. I would, Bruce. Could you make, I just, did you get those, I'm not sure where you got those statements from. Well, evidently Barbara must have shoved them in my box. I, I thought everybody had them oh, because I, okay. no, I just found them tonight. You, you want to follow up on those with her? Yes, I can. Okay. So, if Bruce is going to follow up and then at the next meeting uh, we can get a report of some sort. Well, what anyway. we can do is ask the town clerk, since she has... Yes. The checkbook, and since she gets paid a salary for doing this, we could ask for an accounting and ask her to bring it in for our next meeting. Not the one tomorrow, but no. next week. When next week. So we are revoting this, correct, to make it no. clear? We are revoting re it now. Well, this yes. is, no, yeah, this, this the, only is the only motion on the floor is the swim program. summer swim program yes. only. Yes. Correct. Yes. And that has nothing to do with the account. The account okay. work. It doesn't have anything to do with the account statements either, does it? No, it doesn't. The you know, account statements we need to get for Tritown Beach. Okay. So we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay. So we have the summer swim program before us. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Are there abstentions? So 700? Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. yes. Tritown Beach. Now let me ask you a question. How much money do you have in your reserve fund for Tritown Beach? Reserve fund? Yeah, the fund that they use as their slush fund. Special revenue fund? The special revenue. Or the Tritown Beach doesn't have a special revenue fund, just the swim program. Because we, thought, we collect money for the swim program here in this town. We don't, we don't collect the money on the books for Tritown Beach. That's what I'm you don't collect the money? No, as, as you said, that's, that's in control of the town clerk or town treasurer. That's right. Yeah. But she has money in that fund somewhere. In, in those bank accounts, correct. Okay. So should we put this on hold until we talk to her? The Tritown Beach? Get a total accounting of where we really stand. On Tritown Beach? On Tritown Beach. So what, I guess, what is your question on Tritown Beach? What were you asking about Tritown Beach? That's where Bruce's... On Tritown Beach, there are several funds that they okay. have. The question is, sure. so how many funds do they have? What amounts are they? And how and are they what are used? they for? Yeah. Okay. And once we know what all their funds are, then we can determine, <laughs> do we turn around and ask them to spend some of their funds or let them just keep it? And then one of my questions for you is that we want to know how bad this algae problem is that you have. Do we have to find somebody who uh, can harvest that thing and then make it into, take the seaweed and make it into money and sell it? I would love that, <laughs> yes. <laughs> but we got to address that problem. I don't know how to help you address the problem other than saying it's a problem. Mm -hmm. You either have to have enough money available in these funds so that you can hire a specialist and find out what's got to be done with that. And last year it happened at the end of June. We opened in June and then we just started to notice it and it just got progressively worse and to the point where we were like, we have a problem. I called the state. The state told me to call the town. The town told me to call the state. 
Yeah, that's normal. Uh, <laughs> I called you the mass. Right so far. <laughs> yeah, they told me to call you mass and try to get them involved, but they were all on vacation for the summer. <laughs> um, so we we did the best we could. We made barriers. The, we, it, we I've got pictures that I'd love to share with you to make it easier to you know put it in a certain area so we could gather it. Um, but if anybody could help me, tell me who to reach out to, I'm happy to do that. At the University of Mass, they have a biology program that yep. I think you would should be able to get, but not during the summer. No, they are gone for the so summer. So the question is, can mm -hmm. you get a hold of them now and say, we've got this algae problem, what can you tell us about it and what can you do to help us? Mm -hmm. Because they may have summer students available that could come up and assist you. Okay. And if yeah. you know how much money, you, if you can't do that, then you're going to have to hire some water quality engineer who can tell you what the problems are mm -hmm. and how to correct it. Maybe it's a question of putting in some uh, fish or turtles. I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. It could be mm -hmm. aeration also. It, it could be, be what? A, it, looked like sea, it looked like viney seaweed. It, yeah. it literally was like a vine and it was Fertilizer. light and it was pretty piles and the kids would play in it Pretty they were great so, yeah. but I don't think we can Pretty answer the questions or fund this one until we know what you got for funds and I think you got to reschedule time for this one. Oh, we can do it next week I have a question oh. go ahead I'm, I'm reading this article Tritown Beach Operation I'm sorry Tritown Beach Operation Hangs and Waitley Override and it says that Sunderland didn't want to participate in the program back when it was originally founded. That's correct. So I'd like to be a good neighbor, but that kind of has, makes the hair on the back of my neck stand up when they're using the beach, but they didn't want to participate. And that's, I don't think that's fair. It could be a higher fee for the non- is it a higher it fee? Is. For it is, yes. It okay. is a higher fee. It covers it. Great. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. Yep. Anything else? So what what would you what would you like to do vis a vis this budget? Uh, I would can... like to see the person who's in charge, the town clerk, okay. come up with a listing of all income and expenditures for say last year and the year before. Would you like Barbara to come here at the next finance committee? That's up to her. Whether well, as we long as we ask. get the budgets, we'll drag her out here. Yeah. Well, that last last year they had no. Last program. year is not. This current year is not done one. until 30 June. Right. This one. Program. So you right. can't get it. But the year before that, we should be able to get the final figures on that one. Yeah, you're talking about swim program. No. 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 Oh, the right beach. Beach. Oh, oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. So we should get those figures. Mm -hmm. We should get a listing of all the money they have available and what accounts and where they are. So we need a listing of the assets so we can try and determine what can be done with a seaweed problem. Mm -hmm. And then we can talk about funding the rest of the budget. And I'm happy to educate myself. I can meet with Barbara. This is something that Bill um, has taken care of, and I've happily let him take care of it because sometimes when he explains it, I don't get all these accounts. That's so a problem. I'm the problem is this, that it comes down to this that I brought up to the Deerfield Selectman years ago. And I said, it's not right and it is not fair that we only have one chairman of Tritown Beach for the last 20 something years. Mm -hmm. I think the original agreement, and when somebody can find a copy of that, it'll say that it's supposed to be an agreement between the chairman of the select board from Whiteley and Deerfield to determine who's gonna be the chairman of Tritown Beach for next year or two years or three years. They appointed it 20 years ago and nobody's ever done nothing about it. Mm -hmm. It's time that we get the selectmen to step up to the plate and say, let's do something about it. We got some problems there. Part of the problems I know that they had was that when I asked for a copy of the receipts from years ago, they said they threw them away. Mm -hmm. That's about as illegal as can be. You mm -hmm. can't do that. And I was trying to be polite with the whole thing, but sometimes you can't be too polite. What you got to do is, if you're going to have a chairman, and this is a good example, he should be sitting right there right now. Because he represents a district, he's in charge, but he's a no-show. 
Well, he also didn't know about this till yesterday, I think was the first okay. time and he was notified. I did reach out to him and he was going to try. Reach out to, to him and tell him that the chairman <laughs> of the finance committee would like to talk to him. Okay. And I, I'm, happy to wor I'm happy to work with him and have him educate me and I can take this on. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of work and oh, I, yeah. I do I love it. it's a lot of work. I love it and... Can, um, can we ask you to come back next week at 6 o'clock sure. on Tuesday? And yeah. Hopefully, we'll get a resolution on it beforehand. Okay. And, bring and I'll try to educate myself in the meantime. And, and John's going to be here to make sure that uh, he gets his answers. <laughs> so, right, so Sharon? Should, so should Beth and a, visit with Barb. And if Barb. I don't make it in time, start without me. <laughs> so should Beth, Beth visit with Barb about the um, accounts then instead of, mm -hmm. instead of Bruce? Well, we'll let Bruce talk with uh, – if Barbara's going to be here, I don't care. Okay. Um, I just have, how many commissioners are there? There are four. And there's supposed many? to be three from each town. <laughs> and there's I try to recruit my friends all the time, and I, it's, it's not working very well. So, so that's, that's another. You get a quarter, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Four. Yeah. They all better show up. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. do you have a quorum, or do you supposed to have at least two from each town? Oh, we do. Yeah, we supposed to have three from each town. We meet, I think, three or four times a year. Yeah, but do you aren't you supposed to have two from each town to make a quorum? Yeah, we do. Oh, no, you, oh um, you said uh, you only had uh, four people. Two from yeah, two. Oh, two, oh, two, oh I, I thought, I thought there was three on Wheatley. I know, it's Tritown and oh, it's two towns. I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> I don't talking get talking about changing the name to Tritown. Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So. Thank you. What, what are the fees, excuse me, what are the fees paid by a Deerfield resident? And what are the fees, Deerfield or Wheatley resident? I, I'm, I'm not goes. positive. I'm going to go off memory here, and I can clarify this next week with you. I believe the Deerfield is $25 for the season. Um, outside, Sunderland would be 35 and I believe senior citizens are 15 Okay. But I, I'll, 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 I'll make sure That's to okay. Thank have you. the... Of that. Okay. okay, so we can... So I think we can this on hold and yeah. talk about it next week. Okay. Great. And like I said, if I'm not here right on time, just start yes. without me. Uh, well, we're going to wait for you, John. Yeah, we're going to wait for me. No, I want you to be here. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to have your answer. <laughs> thank you very okay, much. Okay, thank you. Thank you for thank your answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Brenda, next. Christina. Yes. Trevor, you want to come up? Sure. sure. Okay. Um, so you're going to look at 541-5420. I I had those in your boxes, and then what I what I sent with that, or what I what I gave you with that, was two other budgets that the senior center has that are not voted on by us. One of them is the formula fund grant formula grant and the other one is the SIG grant. So what I'm handing out to you now is what Christina actually prepared, which includes all Thank three you. of them on one page. But keep in mind that the only budget you are voting on is the very first one, the one that has an account number attached to it. What I've given you the others so that you can see that's the whole picture. That's where the money goes from the grant. Yeah. Well, the formula grant pays for some things, and the state grant pays for some other things. Right. So, uh, you have to yeah. <laughs> It's an accounting of the grant money. Yes. Right. right. Does that all make sense? Okay. Welcome. Hi. Good evening. <laughs> What's, were you here when we introduced rate. ourselves? What's the budget number? I, 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 uh, most of you did before, but not everyone. Okay. Uh, Five forty-one. Two. Okay. Can we introduce oh, ourselves? Yeah. This one? No, yeah. I didn't give you one of these. Go the same Who way else needs yeah. Allison Vander John Pereski. Bruce St. Peters. Jeff Upton. Skip Homestead. John Pachura. Bruce Hunter. Thank you. <laughs> Why is we go back? So that's an easy Any question. Particular reason? Yeah, Pardon? just those were areas that, so the budget we were working on before um, had some higher numbers in it, and it was just for us to kind of look at and see those are areas where we're, we say cutting, but it's actually, you know, we know this budget is an increase. So it was just for us to say, okay, we were quite a bit more when we got down to really looking at this budget. And 
So those are areas where we brought back to try and get some control under it. And I, I want to point out um, on the 541-5420, you're comparing to the original budget. So the original budget, budget as you know, this year was, remember, we were, it was revised and re-voted at a special town meeting. Re so, so the increase to us was $10,143. So you're really comparing to a $36,000 budget, um, this 37986 which really ends up being a 4.7% increase and not, not what it's reflecting there. So I just wanted to point that out to you um, before we start. Well, how much was that, 10,000? 10, 10,143 was what Deerfield's portion yeah. was, okay. the half, yeah. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying is 27,000 and you change now. Is what you're asking. Well, what our budget what, what our budget right. is right now is about 36,000 right. something. Mm -hmm. The money we bought at a special town meeting was for 2020. No, no it was was for 2019. Right. The, 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 yeah, the item the, the year we're in. Right. And this was with the help of uh, Diane Cornwell, who was kind of helping um, figure out what we needed to do to make the senior center budget work better and that kind of thing. I could do a quick recap of that. Yeah. I don't know if you want me no. to. Yes. Um, so first of all, I wanted to thank Deerfield and, and, and Finance Committee and select boards and all for, and the residents for helping to um, you know, to fund, fund us dramatically over the last year. I mean, that was... Um, it was a big ask, it was a big increase, and, and the residents stepped up to help, help the seniors. Um, you know, I've been on the Board of Oversight for a few years, and uh, just trying to get an understanding of, of what we're doing there and how we're funding it. Um, and we enlisted the help of Diane Cornwall, who ran um, the Berninston uh, senior center and kind of got that up on the ground and running and she, she did a great job She came down and, and has provided a an assessment to us, which we can provide as well uh, I think that's almost done at least we've had a draft of it. Yep. So that should be finished um, So we're looking at a lot of the programs and one of the major things that kind of came up that we didn't really realize is how we structured our, our budget in the past and what we were doing was um, We would get there's, there's really three revenue sources. One is um, the formula fund, and that's a, 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 like a nine or $12 per senior in the town is given from the state um, to the Council on Aging. And then, um, so that's the formula fund. The SIG grant we try for every year, and we've been lucky to get several years, and that helps with uh, funding an outreach person to go out to people's homes that can't get to us and provide services. And then the other is town appropriation. And what we have been doing for years in the past is uh, funding, the, um, funding the personnel, the director and any staff uh, program administrator with the grant and then uh, with the grants and then appropriating whatever was left over. Um, and the problem with that was is that we never really knew what you were going to get for a grant because it doesn't always fall in our cycle. And, so it wasn't, um, you know, if you didn't get the money for the grant, then you were stuck, you know, trying to backfill um, the amount. We should really, and, and what it also did was it, it kind of said to the state, like, look, the state, you, you pay for our, our person and we'll just kind of fill in whatever's left. And the state, when they're giving out SIG grants, they look at that and say, well, you know, is the town really putting up, you know, are they investing in their seniors? Are they, are they uh, stepping up to the plate and, um, and, 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 and funding this program, and if they are, then, then we'll, if we have any extra money, we, we will fund that for you. So it showed um, good faith on our part as, as a community to support that. So we flipped the funding uh, upside down, and we would appropriate the, the, um, ta the director's salary, the program's coordinator, um, and uh, mainly the, mainly, mainly the uh, I guess those two positions we, we would um, appropriate and then we would use the grant that we got for programs. Um, and, and one being the, the outreach coordinator and others, you know, other money would go towards um, different programs that we use. And that's how, that's how the budget and the gray sheets listed out. It'll have, you know, our FY19 budget, then um, 
and then it'll have uh, under formula fund that two two ninety one will will be the formula fund grant, and then the SIG grant is listed there, and it shows what we're spending the money on. The SIG grant is really just on the outreach coordinator, and then the uh, formula fund we uh, pay for the program assistant, um, and and some a little bit of the outreach coordinator, and then their Medicare. Um, and then in, under the formula fund, we, we can put some money towards um, supplies and postage and that kind of thing. But, uh, and then the appropriations kind of shows where that money goes to, mainly the director. So in doing that, we realized that we were not, um, I, I'm not really sure what was happening. I've been thinking about this for, for a while now, trying to figure out, well, why did we need such a large increase? One of the reasons we found was that um, our last director didn't require health insurance. So at some point, we decided not to put that into the budget, and that's, that was a big chunk of money. Um, so we were going along okay every year and, and making it out, and then all of a sudden, we have a new director who needs health insurance. That was a big jump. So that was a big, um, that was a big add for this fiscal year. And then we also found that we weren't funding, um, we weren't really looking at the cost of the heating and all the maintenance on that building. and. We were kind of guessing, oh, maybe 1200 bucks for gas, but it turns out it was 2000 for gas. And a lot of that money was getting um, backfilled by the gift account. And, and the gift account really, you know, when a senior passes away or just is generous and gives some money to the center, um, they're hoping it goes to programs or maybe they can take a trip or help fund the, uh, the tent for the picnic in the year. But we were having to fill, you know, buy gasoline and, you know, trying to fill up those other accounts with that. So this past year, we, we did take a, 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 as good a look as we can at that budget and, and reallocate it, and that's why we came to ask for that money. And, and now here we are back again, hoping not to ask. We were hoping, like, that that budget was going to cover what we were going to need so we wouldn't have anything to ask for. Uh, right now in 2020, but it turns out there, you know, as we get further along in the year, we can see that, you know, uh, gas has an increase, electricity has gone up, and we're getting a full, be better accounting of what those true costs are for the seniors. One being that the building is a sieve for energy efficiency. I mean, it just, if we could be in another building, you know, we'd save a ton. And then we're also looking at, um, you know, snow plowing, we're paying, and, and well, it's under landscape and snow plowing, and we're paying a ton of money relatively to, to, um, to snow plow and to uh, mow the lawn. And we're thinking, is there a way that the town, and we were talking about other budgets like the library, is there a way to, to do that more efficiently with maybe Kevin getting a funding in the summer to have somebody mow? Could they take over that and save some money on that? We do need to account for some of this because it's a three-town operation and Waitley and Sunderland should pay their fair share. So, but we just want to make it as efficient as possible so we can put that money towards funding programs instead of maintenance. Um, so that's long-winded, but I'll, I'll stop there. Oh, but if you have other questions, I'll <laughs> keep rolling. How much was your last sewer bill? Uh, let's see, because I have it together. Oops, six, I have a 639 water, 639 water sewer. And I think so, I think yeah. you had said I think um, thirty nine dollars six, six hundred for water for well, last year. Right, right. the, the water was six hundred thirty nine for sewer. Six hundred. Yeah. You know if you've gotten a bill yet for sewer? Um, I have gotten a bill. Yes, and. Uh, I, the 39, those numbers are accurate from, I mean, I looked at the last year of bills for all these numbers, yeah. so they're accurate as of that. The 39 for water yeah. is an accurate no, bill? No, sewer. Six, well, you have, you have for water $39, and that's yep. why. I'm, oh, am I mixing them? Time? And, I, Sorry. and I'm looking yes. at that, and it's like, is that a real number? It is. Yeah, I mean, really, they have a sink and water, yeah. I guess. Well, yeah, but you have a $25 minimum bill for each, right. uh, each half, which bills, is $50. So it should be at least uh, $50 minimum. Yeah. Uh, hmm. I, 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 I will look again. That's what you I... Did, you didn't I mean. just put in for six months. No, because I, I remember I had two of them. But I will obviously look again. What it may be is we'll take another fifty bucks. Because she only got right. the first bill, and the second bill is due out shortly. Um, 
Yeah, I think that's right. Maybe we were thinking that was one. You know, I maybe we were thinking that bill. was a year. Can maybe we talk year. about something that's a little more yeah. substantial than <laughs> thirty nine dollars? Well, it should be thirty nine or fifty. Okay, we, um, we paid the town of Deerfield in December for it must be sewer uh, for May through October, and it was two hundred and eighty eight dollars. Okay, that's encouraging. You know what was? Well, it's going to be an increase next year, so the six hundred so probably. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Two eighty eight times two is you know almost a hundred bucks. So. Maybe I put them in wrong, upside down. There was two bills. One was. I'm just thinking it could be light, six hundred dollars for that. And I'm, I'm a few. I'm worried that a few of these are light. I am too. Yeah. Yeah. And I just. They are. Know, well, I, I, it, we, you even. Concerned. You even reduced the snow removal and landscaping, yes. hoping that Kevin would be able to yes. help out Kevin's right. department. Um, right, we don't even know that for sure. Right, and, and I think you reduced uh, janitorial, maybe with the idea that you might be looking for somebody else yeah, that could do it cheaper. Yeah, a different vendor or whatever. I think the town should go out to bid for janitorial. Yes. I just think it's time we, we look at that and see if we're getting the good, a good rate. And, um, you know, it's, it was uh, Doesn't the town pay about sixteen thousand for this building. I don't know what they pay this building. It's it's. Oh, it's like thirteen hundred dollars a month. It, it's three. It's, it's, it's you know, almost yeah, three thousand dollars for that one sure floor. Here. Sure. Sure. What's this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, this here. Yeah, I'm just interested in the hours that are associated with the three staff people. Mm -hmm. I believe the director's hours increased about four hours over last year. Four hours. Four hours per day, per week? Per week. Per week. So about 200 hours a year. Part of it is. Yes. And with more programs, is that you're running one more day, is that? Oh. Program I'm there every weekend. day, and there are th programs going on either. five days a week. Okay. Or if we still have the same yeah, th official up, yeah. okay. opening same. schedule same. Monday, same. Wednesday, same. Friday, yeah. but there is right. never a day that I'm there by but myself. There's, there's always there's programs there's running. Well, so and I, and it, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought that we had increased um, Christina's hours a little bit to cover yes. what we can't do with the outreach through right. the SIG grant because the SIG grant keeps getting reduced. Right, it correct. Just got reduced right, again. isn't it? Yes, okay. it just got reduced. That's just fine. Got I, just yep. I just didn't know why there was an increase in that. Yeah, hours. and I think, you know, no. Christina's probably working about 50 yeah. hours a week, Take I would say, on yeah. average. <laughs> um, it, it truly is there very late, uh, many <clears> nights. <throat> um, and so statement. we would love to get it to a 40, but we're, we're concerned about cost on the, on the taxpayers and want to be able to offer those services. Well, you're not that far off. I know, I know. You're we're only close. about 200, 200 yeah. hours. Yeah, I mean, ideally, we would have asked for 40, and, but and this, it's a cost, the obviously. Boo, the boo was really, you know, trying to make sure that we were. Um, like you said, adding programs and adding stuff when we were doing that. We certainly can account for her time. She's doing that. But the services that we're rolling out, trying to reach out to, to Waitley and Sunderland and do some programs in their towns as well mm -hmm. for seniors who can't get over. Um, so that's the goal in the next year is to really focus on mm -hmm. um, yes. seeing where we can expand those services to them and get. Um, benefits aren't prorated, are they? Yes. I don't know if you I mean because I'm question. not at 40? Yes. Yeah. That's not a good thing either. No, no benefits. No, benefits I think I think covered. I think once you work yeah. 20 hours or more a week, the benefits are you get oh, all the benefits. benefits. All right. Yeah. Something was prorated. I remember when I was. Yeah. Maybe it was. Something was told to me was pro. When your golden parachute. Well, your your vacation is prorated. Vacation is prorated. You know those things are prorated based on the number of hours. Okay. Although well, 36 hours a week, I think, is, is full time. 37 so, and a half, I think. Well, no, I think, I think it's 35, <laughs> but I could be wrong on that for retirement. Oh, retirement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Or 32, one or the other. So I was, you know, we were concerned about some of the, you know, we took the snow removal bill and cut it in half, and, and that's on a wing and a prayer, because I'm hoping this year I can work with Kevin and figure out something. We have, I think Sokolowski's does this, and, mm -hmm. and I think, um, I'm not sure who did it before, but they were thinking whoever's doing the library do this, I think they do that library. And I know that came up at the, at the library 
uh, presentation. So I'd really like to get with Kevin. I don't want to just promise that Kevin's going to do all this stuff, but I, I don't know what else to do. I got to find another a more efficient way. I feel like it's a town driveway. It's you know let's plow the driveway and uh, salt it as a as a town building as we would this building. And but I, I agree there needs to be some amount of money in there because it is a three town adventure and we need to make sure that you know they're they're paying as well. So what are the grants um, awarded? That's the one two. Of the grants, I'm sorry, what was that? One of the two grants awarded. A oh, when? When? Uh, <laughs> just found out SIG, yes, right? The, the, the SIG grant, I just found out the dollar amount last week, end of last <clears throat> week. Um, when did the formula fund, fund I think, was November, in? right? What's that? Was no, formula we didn't fund get the November? Money in, so. For well, the for, for the formula fund, we just we just got the money right. like last so, month yes. for the formula grant. Right. Although that had been determined back in November. Maybe. That's what I was thinking. November. But, but we're we're guessing going into the next right. year what it might be, and we'll have to adjust accordingly. Are you able to apply for council on aging funds in the state? What that. That's, that's the is. formula. Yeah, yeah, formula. yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah, and that money actually goes when to we get yeah, it goes to each town. But you can actually get equipment through that program too. Can you? Not that I know. Yeah, I have in town of Berniston. You can check with Diane. Yeah. When we did that senior center, they purchased through the Council on Aging grant funding. Okay. The, um, I believe all the equipment in the kitchen. Huh. Okay. We'll have to. We'll have to. She's usually good about <laughs> yeah, pointing that stuff out, but it might have changed. <laughs> it might have changed, but yeah, I know. She, yeah, yeah. She's been very good about trying to get us, you know, straight. And, um, that, it's a nice program. Up there. Also provide for program. Well, right, yeah. right now when they do buy equip kitchen equipment or repair kitchen equipment, whatever it is, they get half of that reimbursed by LifePath. Mm -hmm. Understood, because yeah. that's. That's the agency that uses the store food and deliver food. Right. One of the areas, uh, you know, repairs and parts. I think we have twelve hundred bucks. I think you spent that already yeah. on the on what the oven. Oven. I mean, so we're, I'm nervous that this budget is not. I mean, it, it is what it is, and we still have we a gift account that we could yeah. we could pull from if we get in a pinch. <laughs> like we took the money out for the tent for the picnic and we're hoping that would get paid for maybe by donations or or that gift account if you know right if we'll we can't find anything but uh, you know I don't want to keep coming back to the well but I just want I want to be honest about what what it really takes to run that and and the biggest problem is the building it's in um, it really is a it's a money side. yeah I mean the numbers which is it is an increase from F1, you know, 19 mm -hmm. of electricity and gas. The numbers are an increase, but they're not actually high enough of an increase. So, um, in fact, just today I, I found out that, according to Kevin, who spoke to <laughs> the gas guy, as I call him, because I'm not sure what his name is, that we, we shouldn't, I've been lowering the temperature at night of the building to 60. We should not be doing that, right. apparently. Right. It shouldn't go any lower than 65. So now that means who, that's another increase. Who that's says that? Kevin, because he says he said it, it's, the it's, guy, too, right? it's too hard on the system. And yeah. Yeah. I, I think you actually. Not necessarily an increase in your cost. Okay. Right. Because, because, that, because that's what he's trying to tell you. Okay. Exactly. Didn't, didn't you have we, so much mass, you let it cool down. He had indicated he thought It takes twice as much heat to heat it okay. up if it's stabilized. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we have a difference of opinion on the board, apparently. Yes, we do. <laughs> Those were the two numbers that jumped out at me, oh. and I hope people keep in mind for long-term planning here. Yep. That when you look at that building and you look at these costs, yep. some people better do some hard thinking about that building. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yep. So. I mean, it's tough <laughs> not having two and a half floors unheated when you're trying to heat one floor. Right. Yes. Right. Uh, yeah, it's sucking up, and yeah. it's, they're foaming every little hole and trying to get it yeah. sealed up. But it's yeah. So, so the, the the thing about heating was not the difficulty of the equipment handling it, since that's relatively new equipment. That's in. Yeah. it. It is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Can I ask you a couple of questions? <clears throat> yes, of course. It's Number one. 11, How many other people use that building other than seniors? And what do you get for rents coming in? 
increased. I asked for um, donations, so not rent. <laughs> I'm not actually collecting rent from other groups, but I do ask for a donation. Um, and do you get one? From most of them, there's a couple of groups like the VFW that's been going there for, I don't yeah. know, 20 plus years. The VFW should go into that building for free. Right. Right. No, I, exactly. It's, because it's a requirement from the yeah. state that the veterans groups get free housing right. by the town. Right. Yeah. So, for, but that was an, that was the example okay. that came to mind that they're they're not giving a donation or anything. No. Nor would I ask for one, obviously. No, but I um, go by there sometime at night and I see lights on. Yep. Yep. There are group. Yes. It's exactly. sometimes there. that's her working. Yeah. That, yeah. Actually, <laughs> well, to, to answer that, Jack. Yeah, but it's not your office that I see the light on. To answer oh. that, Jack, I think <laughs> I we have been talking at the board of oversight about um, uh, do, putting. Um, revolving fund together so that we had an, a vehicle to be able to accept um, rent right. or you know use of it's space right. charge, charge for because we don't have problem. anywhere right. legally to, yeah we don't have anywhere to put it right, right now so it, and that's why i, I know we, donations. <laughs> we you know it's another account right <laughs> so well, she has enough to keep track of <laughs> i know so it's it's you know it adds another thing to keep track of and another thing to go over but I think it's the only way we really should be. But your donation account is 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 a um, nonprofit account. Yeah, but I didn't think we were allowed to take money for yeah. rent and put it in there. No. I, I'm not. Okay, a, I'm just. That's my understanding. Yeah, it's, so really, just, it's really for donations and gifts. Like yes. You have for donation account. That's all. Right, some sort of. We'd need to set up like a revenue yeah. account yeah. where we could take in some money. As you were saying, we, they, people should pay. Yeah. If they're using it. There's no yeah. doubt about we're it. Using our heat and electricity. Yep. So. Yep. One and more question. Electricity is high. <laughs> Good. OPEB. What are you doing for OPEB? For for my one employee. Um, for your one employee. I I agree. We need to we need to start putting it into everybody's. Um, what happens is if we can't do it for the whole town which I can appreciate not doing it for the whole town because one of the philosophies is wait till we finish paying off our liability mm -hmm. for the retirement and then pick up OPEB at that time. I don't have a problem with that. But there's three groups in particular. This is yes. one because it's a multi-town thing. Yep. Another one is EMS because that's a multi-town thing. Yep. And then we also have the new fund for the sewage treatment plants for those operators. Yep. And those things should be put in now because what happens is if you don't put them in now, you can't put them in for last year. Right. You have to put them in now for this year in order to do that. And that's a good question. Do we? Um... And what happens is the reason I'm bringing that up is because I want to educate the selectmen. I'm lucky I got two here. Yes. No, I, I'm, you, don't, you don't even have to. Uh, I, I'm all over that. So I'm trying to preach to the choir. You are preaching to the choir. I, I, but I'm trying to figure out. Uh, the methodology. I mean, I know it costs us what fifteen hundred bucks a person, or thirty five hundred, thirty five hundred bucks a for person for each full time person. But uh, you know, so I what happens is, I think we should be putting into the program. Uh, 4%. Since you have like one full time and one two part time, you may should be putting in five six thousand dollars worth at least. Yeah. And mm -hmm. if you don't do it this year, I want to make sure that it's done next year. Well, I'll put in. Yeah. If we can get that to fly, it's never going to happen. Um, I would, I'd be happy to get um, at least what we're doing for our towns. Um, five percent. Four or five. I think we're doing four or five percent yep. of our of the cost of what we pay to the retirement uh, or is the hey, retirement insurance. Right? Insurance. So um, yeah, I'm I'm for I'm all for that. I think we need to get going. At least have a, a line item started yep. for it. Well, we have a line item for benefits. So yep. Well, you got the benefits, but you got to put that in there with squeezing one more line. Yeah. Yeah. OPEP. We can fit that. So I've kept. Wait a minute. I'm not asking for bathroom. No, no, no. <laughs> um, the administrative overhead, do they? Yes. Do, does, does the yes. senior center write a check to the town? How does it? No, they, no that's, that's, the that's, that's an assessment that I, I personally put into their account quarterly. Or take out of their account quarterly. It's it's the indirect costs. It's same same uh, same formula that Skims uh, yeah Skims has exactly. I'm not concerned about the form. I'm trying to think their account. You mean they have a separate checking account? No, no. But in their in their fund, I charge charge the um, 
the senior center assessment fund, the fund where we have the operating costs that the towns pay for. And that's I assess that quarterly. And that's four thousand. This year, it's 4, the, in two thousand twenty. It'll be four thousand and ninety-two dollars. Yeah, it was, it was so, per, per is that the budget? Is there a credit yes. somewhere else in the budget? Some other department? Is there a credit no, for it? Just no, cash. no, not not within directs. It it goes. It's it's a basically just a transfer of cash from one fund into the general fund. So it's it's a uh, a revenue source for the general fund, and I've reflected that. So it's that. in revenue. It is yes. in that okay. revenue. Yeah. Good enough. Thank you. So and that's I do the get, four four thousand ninety two is what we're talking. And I yeah. I, do, I do get some pushback on that a bit because of um, you know we we factor um, legal into that. And, oh, we don't charge for legal, and I said, well, as we talked about twenty twenty eight dollars, and I said, well. You're lucky you don't charge for you know we, we don't but it's there if we need it. But um, but we could charge we could charge for general insurance which we don't charge Correct. for. So there's when we you don't know, charge rent because it was a handshake here. deal years ago on Six using that building instead of mothballing it. I think you know I'm learning all these you know arrangements that have been made in the past. But you know it's time to look at some of that stuff and especially for the space that it's in. And I think it, once we you know, find a new space, build a new space, figure that out. We should change all of that in our agreement. So definitely looking at that in the future. I'd like to see if we can move on a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, I was just mm -hmm. yep. Any other questions? Can, can I make a motion? Two, I've got two quick questions. Yep. The, the two grants, formula grants or, or for outreach, whatever. Yep. Where are those grants from? From, from the state? Yeah, from the state. Both from the state, state. both yes. from the state. Okay. And then they have another, they have another grant for your uh, exercise programs that isn't even reflected here because it's, it's a very, very yeah, small it's thing. it's $900 for one specific exercise class. So, yeah. It doesn't even, I mean, I can't even run it the whole year. It doesn't cover it, so. Okay. Go ahead, John. Um, I make a motion we approve the Senior Center Expense Budget Account 514. 541-5420 of 37,986. Okay. I'll second it. Thank you. And that's Deerfield's share of the... Yes. Thank you. Yes. yes. Okay. Correct. Is it Deerfield's share of the 75,972? Yes. Yes. 50%? Yes, mm -hmm. 37,986. Right. That's 50%? 50% mm -hmm. is 37,986. Comes... Okay. Out of 40,000? Yeah, okay. Yeah, got it. All right. Yeah. Yep. All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So thank you. Yes, thank you very much. For your that support. was seven zero zero. Can I ask one question that you got to ask? Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Is, is your increase in, in wages based on the recommendation of the select board? Yeah, the step. The step yes. only. That, that was reflected in the other two <laughs> positions. Yep. Okay. So we have one more budget that we're going to go through tonight. Is that it? Uh, skims. And then um, if you wanted to go over the energy committee, that's a pretty simple okay. one. Um, or OPEP. But you can leave those for next week, too, I'm sure. All right. Let's do South County EMS. You, you lucked out. You should have been first. Is, is that true? Is this luck? Well, look, look at it this way. Everybody we, wants to go home. We spent, we spent an hour and 15 minutes on $75,000. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we got four hours to go with yours. Great. Yeah. Two pages. On that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And then multiply by two because it's two pages. <laughs> Good, good evening. Thank you for having me. Oh, mine's a little easier to read. Mine's only one page. <laughs> I was wondering about that 2500 and wondering if we could just put it in here. And they don't really have it on their capital items anymore because it's only 2500 to say 2500 is is an additional offset and it means nothing if it's a wash. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's in the box. Okay. 
unless you took it out earlier, because I think I put it in there last week. Yeah. Ah. Okay. Questions? Um, I have, or, or did you want to make a presentation? Uh, I guess. Well, it's up to you. Uh, I, when I presented in Sunderland a couple weeks ago, I just kind of started from the top and hit the points that I thought might stand out. I can do that. Or we can go why, right Why don't we do that, and then if there are questions, we'll go back over. Okay. okay. Is that all right, Bruce? Is that, uh, that, 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 if there's a question on an item, can we ask it as we go through it? Sure. Yeah. I guess. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Why not? Um, sure. So right at the top is uh, our personnel costs as the enterprise fund and as a three-town entity. We cover not just our salaries, but also our employee benefits as well. So you'll see an increase in all those things, the salary and wages. Those increases are based uh, solely on the Town of Deerfield's personnel committee and then ultimate select board recommendations. So those calculations are actually based on a step and a COLA. And that, that is those numbers there. Um, I don't think the select board has voted on anything yet, but if they don't vote the COLA, then we'll pull that amount out. We'll have to re-vote the budget. No, I, I don't believe so, no. The, the vote that the... Yeah, because I'm not voting this budget if it's inclusive. He was directed to uh, add, the, add the 2%. By who? Uh, well, we put it in because we wanted a representation of what the highest budget might be. So uh, the, the BOO voted this uh, on the 26th with the understanding that if the COLA wasn't approved by the town of Deerfield, that it, we just, it wouldn't I be. That meeting. Okay. So that's how we got to those salary numbers. The benefit costs, those are all given to me from the town of Deerfield clerk's office, accountant's office, uh, based on the numbers that they have and the calculations that they do. Um, so you will see an increase in those as we see across the board and all the other departments. Any questions, further questions on salaries, benefits? Got one question on benefits. Yes. OPEB. We currently do not budget for OPEB in this budget. Uh, I'm of the mindset of everybody else that if we can figure out what those numbers are and we can plan for them in the future, I'm all for it. Okay. We got a uh, thing from the town that came in where we did an OPEB study. That's a step in the forward. If you'd like to see a copy of it, I just happen to have a copy of it right here. And the OPEB study came down to this, that for each full-time employee, they said that we should be putting away $3,500 per each full-time employee. So how many full-time employees do you have? Nine. Nine. So that's $31,500 you should be putting into. Or, or if you apply the same policy that the town has to this department, you would be putting in $2,025. Okay. Let me tell you what's wrong with that same town policy. I I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Since this is an enterprise fund, if they don't put in the cost for this in the coming year, we can't go back. And if it's costing the town $3,500 per employee, guess what? The town's paying 52% of it, but guess what? We're lo losing 48% of it. We're losing almost uh, fifteen or 16000 Dollars. That's my concern. I, I, I don't believe in, I don't want to rape the district at all. I think you guys do a great job. I just want to be fair. That's my only concern. I think and I don't care what the town says because the town doesn't have a good policy regarding OPEP. Right. I, I think, though, um, this, this is a, uh, an estimate of a future liability. Yes, so I don't know that you can put a year on it. So if we've missed the last several years, I don't think it, I don't know, in my estimation, I don't think that matters because it's not that you're, you're saying this is a true cost of this year. It's what you choose to put into it. I, I could be wrong, but I just, just thought I'd throw that out there. That's absolutely true. However, if you put nothing in there, you know who pays the total bill? Oh, sure. The Absolutely. total bill is paid by the town of Deerfield. Mm -hmm. That's a missing link that's in there right now. It's a glaring link that should be addressed. And it's like I say about the insurance issue. Yep. Maybe $50 or $75 is not right, 
But you know something? We're better off to address it now than to wait three more years because that's three more years of liability that we got. And all I want is what's fair, nothing more. Sure. And the best estimate we had last year was $3,500 per employee because most of us went to that meeting. That's totally out of line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That is totally out of line. So to me, I'd like to see something put in there for OPEP. Uh, we lost the chair, it looks like. Yes, we do. Right. He does that every now and then. <laughs> but, we, but we have another assistant chairman over there. All right, great. Nice chair. Well, um, we, can, we can move on. But okay, I, great. I agree with John. We need to do something. Yeah, like sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, moving down, the, the individual lines uh, adjusted up and down based on historical information. You'll see the rent line item uh, has decreased. Uh, by a fair margin there. The previous years of $50,000 and change was the combined rent for South Deerfield Fire District, Waitley and Sunderland Fire. Um, now the agreement that the Board of Oversight has entered with the town of Deerfield will be $36,000 for the building uh, located at 88 Greenfield Road. The difference there is our rents previously covered electricity, heating, the utilities, the water, those buildings. Now we're responsible for those ourselves. So you'll actually see that while the rent has gone down, lower down on office expenses, that's actually gone up by um, a little less than $10,000. That's to reflect all of those utility costs that we now incur. So they're kind of offsetting each other uh, in that way. Um, question, yeah. question on expenses. Medical exp expenses went up about 25%, 20%? Medical. Uh, under employee benefits or something? Uh, medical, medical, medical supplies. supplies. Oh, medical supplies? I 20. think it's just a more accurate reflection of what we're, at, we're really spending. Yeah, from yeah. I, part, part of that is going to be tied directly to the number of calls that we're doing. So we saw a 13% increase in our call volume over the previous year, okay. last year over the previous year, and then 10 before that. So just as we're doing more calls, we're naturally going to be using more supplies as well. Uh, the other number that's been a... a hot topic recently is the uh, indirect costs. It's listed, it's tucked in here under other payroll costs. Town of Deerfield clerical expenses is how it's not noted on here. Th those are the indirect costs that we've been talking about. That's based on a historical formula of 10% of the associated departments in the Town of Deerfield. Everybody's in agreement that while that percentage may have made sense when we were first instituted and we had all this grant and all this startup stuff that we need to revisit it because it's unlikely that, well, it's certain that we aren't leaning on the town offices and the other as much as we were at our inception. So now the question is, okay, what's an appropriate number? Um, Brenda was kind enough to do a calculation that would show it, it's with the wastewater so, treatment plant in the senior yeah. center? Yeah, so, so when I calculate indirect costs, I calculate indirect costs for the wastewater treatment plant and for the senior center exactly as they were outlined for mm -hmm. me for, this, for SCIMS. And the, the one difference is that we were always charging SCIMS 10% because that was the original calculation we, you know, that was what was decided on at the beginning. But what I use for the wastewater treatment plant and for the senior center is actually the total dollar amount of their budget compared to the total, total budget of the town per the town's uh, tax recap. And if I, if I apply that percentage to South County EMS as well, it's 6.45%, not 10%. Last year it was 6.8% or something like that. So um, my thought on it was that we should be treating them equally and fairly, and therefore maybe their assessment to the town should be less. What, can I just clarify? You said you're comparing the... Can you just... The, just what are the budget numbers and not for everybody else and not the 10%? So... For the other two operations, I'm applying it based on their total budget compared to the, to the town's total budget. Okay. Whereas with SCAMS, we've been charging them 10% all along, 
but their total budget compared to the town's total budget is really only six something percent. So the Board of Oversight looked at this. These numbers were presented. Everybody's in agreement that the 10% seems too high. They felt it was premature to shove in a 6.45 since this budget has been prepared and disseminated um, before these numbers came available. But coming into the next year, they really want to drill down into the individual departments and figure out whether even the 6.45 is fair because maybe it's higher than that or maybe it's lower than that. And so they just want to make sure that it's equitable um, and that's why it's still represented as a 10% in this fiscal year uh, upcoming with the consideration that the next thing after we get through budget season is going to be to address what that percentage actually should be. To address that for fiscal year 21. 20. So for fiscal 20, they were willing to give us the higher amount. Okay. Which is the... Uh, 74. The 70, 73,000. Um, if I had applied it to the 6.45%, it would have been 47,300. But we can make it up for that. So. It's great. Comes out in the wash, right? The lunch already agreed. Next. Um, and so uh, moving down, we kind of get through all the other line items. Uh, you will see that estimated revenue from services. So that's the number that we collect in billing. Can we? Oh, yes, okay. please. Yeah, you're talking about billing now? Yes. OK. Yeah. Um, I think. Zach, can I interrupt? I just want yeah. to go back to uh, the bottom line item. The professional education and training yes. for 20000 uh, Obviously, that's been increasing over the years, and that's due to people you've been adding. Yeah, so there's the, the biggest jump that you'll see, which occurred in fiscal year 2017, was uh, when we entered into an ongoing training uh, contract with the service. So they, they provide 100% of the continuing education hours that all of our staff need. Uh, in order to recertify, plus they do remediation. So if we have any issues that come up, they do individual improvement plans in our CQI and things like that. So that the large increase was that. And then over the years, um, the additional couple of thousands of dollars that's increased was because of new hires or now that we're, we've got our C legs, you know, we're adding additional classes and, and additional opportunities. See how they're being provided with their training and education is there any commitment they have to make to uh ems as far as skims as far as years <coughs> served like a clawback agreement for right that. exactly heading back to a clawback agreement sure um our full-time staff these are ongoing you know annual or biannual recertifications that they need in order to be to work in the field so that's just we pay for our full-time staff right. to have that um our part-timers they get the continuing education hours for free they still have to pay out of pocket for cpr cards things like that they do get a discount uh, with their affiliation with us. We, there's no minimum set for them now, but that is because our level of staffing means that all of our part-timers work regularly enough that you know we don't have any moochers or anything, that nobody's <coughs> getting a free ride from us. So yeah. uh, it hasn't been anything we had to address. Yet. All right. Um, just to follow up, your part-time employees work in other jobs? Uh, yes, yeah, all our per diem employees. Uh, Working in the emergency medical field, yeah, I, I mean it's so, it's you're a highly specialized person. So, they yeah, they they have to work someplace else. So their order. training might be free someplace else also. I uh, potentially yes. Um, if they're full time, something. No else. part time. No, if they're full time, someplace else. In a lot of cases. Yeah, yeah. So if they're so those so those are the things that we don't pay for. So there's CPR recertification. We pay our full timers for that. Yeah. The CLS recertifications. We don't pay that for our per DMs. Okay. The, they're still the, the onus is still on them to to maintain so the those certifications. So the only thing is free is some continuing education. Yeah. So the 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 way our training service works is that because our roster has so many people there's a certain amount of workload associated right. with continuous quality improvement things like that so included <coughs> in doing that for 30 something employees all of those employees are entitled to attend these regularly held classes they're not one-on-one -on -one classes they're not extra cost classes these are classes that our training organization is hosting anyway <coughs> 
So members of our department are free to walk in and sit in on those classes. And that applies towards the uh, certification? Yeah, so every two years we're required to have 60 hours of continuing education. Okay. So are you going to be here tomorrow night to talk about capital? So I assume you're not going to be here tomorrow night, so I would like to at least address the capital yes. issue tonight. When we get to yeah. When we get down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I, I will make sure to bring it up. I have um, a question, too. Uh, you'll notice that the estimated revenue from services, which is the money we get from billing, I did increase from $500,000 to $525,000. Now that we have an additional year of numbers uh, to go to look at, some history, I felt that that was a, a safe move to make, to increase that, um, that we, we aren't going to fall below that if the bottom were to fall out of the insurance market or something like that. Um, that is still a low estimate compared to what we expect to bring from revenue, but that is by design. That is so, you know, we don't run out of money. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there is an increase there, um, and I do think that that is a safe increase to make. Um, I'm still on billing. Uh, it's $40,000, and in FY19, looks like 18 used a billing service. This year and last year, who does your billing? Uh, it's, the, it's the same company. Um, it's just the way it's noted on that line. Um, and it's the same company. It's Comstar. It's a percentage of our collection. So the more money that we collect, the larger the, the bill is going to be. What's, what's their they percentage? charge a 6 and, and, six and a half. Six and a half. Mm -hmm. Six and a half percent of what's billed? Mm -hmm. of no. What's of what they collect. What yes. they collect. Yep. Um, and we just discussed that recently that it's time to look at that contract again and make sure that that rate is still compar competitive uh, considering the call volumes that we're doing. Are there other services that are comparable? And, and I mean that not only to say they do it, but actually do the job. The short answer is no. The long answer is there's one other service that's usually considered to be, um, but we did an RFP a number of years, not too long ago, I mean, since our inception, I think it was 2015 or 2016, and um, the rate was the same, but the services they could provide weren't as stout as the service that we have now. We've been very, very happy with our service. <clears throat> um, so the, uh, can you kind of go through what, what they provide for service on a time frame? You know, what Sure. So uh, they, they interface directly with our electronic patient care records. So once a week, they can actually go into our back end and they electronically pull our records. So we no longer have to physically mail off run reports. They don't have to read handwriting, anything like that. It's all collected electronically. They take it electronically and they immediately bill. So their guarantee, in, in which is happening, is they bill the insurance company within 14 days. Uh, it's usually 7 to 10. Um, and then with that information, they collect that information. If, they, if there's missing information, if something doesn't appear to be right on our end, they bounce it back to us to make sure that they get the correct information. I get those, I, I think maybe like three or four a month I see about, hey, it says you went here, but it doesn't say it here type of stuff, so we correct that. They build the patient, um, well, they build the insurance, then they build the patient. They handle all of the money, so all the patients send their money to them. They do a report. They direct deposit it for us. And then after three bills, 90 days, um, we have the option to, they interface with a collections agency. So we have the option to send somebody, you know, subset of people to collections and Comstar is the center for all of that. So whatever the, co the collections company gets, it goes into Comstar, into that central repository. They track everything. And so that money comes still from Comstar. So everything's reconciled from them um, on, their own, on their own sheets. So after 90 days, you have to make a determination as to whether we're going to continue to, to bill or, or what? Yes, yeah, so they provide a disposition report mm -hmm. of everybody who's beyond 90 days and their understanding of why it went beyond 90 days. Uh, 
South County EMS, uh, I think it was last calendar year, we finally got a, a policy in place to objectively deal with these cases. You know, we're, we're going to provide a service. We never want anybody to hesitate calling 911. Um, the fact that we can make up some of our budget and billing is a cherry on top for us. So our policy in place now allows us to kind of do a screening and decide, okay, who are the people who can't pay? You know, we don't want to try to get blood from a stone or punish them for having to call 911 versus who are the people who can pay and just think that they don't have to or they can get away with it. And so applying our policy, we figure out who those people are and then we can refer them to either credit bureau reporting, period, and then we write off the money or to the collections agency and then, you know, whether it's a payment plan or a, a percentage. So the insurance... We get payments from the insurance companies, from Medicare, mm -hmm. Medicaid, whatever. Uh, once we get that insurance, you know, the insurance company says, oh, yeah, we love your ability for 1500 bucks. Here's $655. At that point in time, do we cut and say we take the 655 and and... I, I don't know what state law says either. Yeah, so. it's, it's a little complicated. So typically what you look at is Medicaid, Medicare, like mm -hmm. you said, private insurance, and then self-pay. Yep. So, um, and the, the people with private insurance, we bill X. They say, okay, here's 90% of it, or here's 100% of it minus the copay, or minus the individual's premium. And so then we turn around and we bill that copay or the premium to the individual or something like that. Um, Medicaid, Medicare, uh, we have to have a contract with the government in order for us to receive money from Medicaid mm -hmm. and Medicare. So we say, okay, this paramedic run costs $1,200. And private insurance might say, hey, that's a bargain, here's a check. Medicaid says, no, we're gonna pay you $300. Oh, and by the way, it's illegal for you to go after the individual for the mm -hmm. difference. You can't collect more than 300 Right, exactly. So then what happens is the difference between that 1200 and that $300, $900. How'd I do? Okay. Uh, $900. Um, ostensibly, that's what becomes the write-off. And that's why we see write-offs in medical billing and it's certainly emergency medical services and 911. You know, I don't get it. I can't run somebody's credit before they call, right? I can't swipe their card. We give you a service no matter what. Mm -hmm. So it's that difference there. Um, so each month when I get the reconciliation from Comstar, they'll, they'll show commitments, 178,000 or whatever, and then they'll show write-offs, immediate write-offs, 65,000, whatever it ends up being. Mm -hmm. So every month I record that. I record the commitment and then I record mm -hmm. the write-off. Um, what, what I'm, what I'm a little bit concerned about are, are once it goes over 90 days, or once it goes over 120 days, is there any chance we're going to collect that? There is. I, some of it still trickles in. Okay. I, I mean, it drops off precipitously, but there, there is a component of that. And we've been remiss in not doing a good job of going back and checking all that. And that's, that's just a manpower thing, you know. So, I mean, um, if you're, you're sitting the out there and you've got a million dollars in, in, and I don't know what the numbers are, but it's just... It, the figure is, it's nice information, but it's basically useless because it, you know, the, the likelihood of collecting it. And is there any way of going into that and saying, all right, let's, let's cut our lot. Or yeah, well, we need to be doing a better job of yeah. that. We need to be addressing those write-offs sooner. And, and I heard you. We, <laughs> we, uh, we haven't been doing it. Part of it was we didn't have that policy in place mm -hmm. until recently. So we weren't able to objectively go through and say, for sure, these are going to be the write-offs. Um, it is... It is the billing company's responsibility once we tell them what we want done with it. So where we haven't been doing a good job is after those 90 days and they give us our reconciliation report and they say, what do you want? Do you want to write that off or do you want us to go after the money? And, and it's our job to tell them what we want and then they say, okay, thanks, and then they do it. So well, wouldn't you tell them to go after all of it? It's not costing us money to have them go after it since they're only getting 6% of what they collect. Well, because... <laughs> Uh, well, we get into ethical and moral dilemmas there where we are a public service that we provide to the citizens. And if we, if we get known that if you call okay, us, you know, know you're going to have, 
your wages garnished, you know, over, you know, a $500 bill or a $50 right, okay. copay, yeah. they're not going to call 911. You got to keep them. It, so, okay. you know, it's right. uh, first and foremost, our job is to provide a vital service to our citizens. We thankfully can offset our budget through billing, um, and we need to make sure that we're doing that in an appropriate and compassionate manner. Um. All right, so the bottom line of the budget is a uh, slight increase in the uh, estimated billing. Um, retained earnings money uh, that is being applied uh, is $231,077. Uh, so the difference after we subtract that from our operating budget is $632,859, of which 51.76 Deerfield share is $327,575 for fiscal year Six. 20. Oh, sorry, rounding. <laughs> um, there was a $1, one dollar rounding, rounding. I just want to back up to just a quick second. I didn't want to interrupt in that. But there's a line item here uh, that is showing up for advertising and promotion for $5,000. You see that right here under That was expense. not there before in previous years. I'm wondering what that advertising right and promotion for $5,000 is on that line item. Right here. Under office expense, last one. It's under oh. office expenses, just above the $2,000 okay. telephone. So, oh, oh, I had you that. You know what? I didn't catch that. That's my fault. It's it's utilities. Sorry. It was actually utilities. that line item should it used read to be utilities. Advertising and promotion, and I didn't see to change it. Okay. I, I apologize. I, and that, I. <laughs> I, I will take some responsibility in that. I think I, I, without consulting Brenda, saw that we weren't spending any money on that and we were budgeted zero every single year before. And I thought, oh, That's without screwing up any formulas, I'll change this to utilities and. Oh, this is the one you were talking about yeah. before the reduction in No, there was no. <laughs> yeah. uh, The question um, going back to office expense. Yes. Um, I guess we didn't, we must have used Deerfield's expense office supplies for about ten thousand dollars less I, we are I, we were using south Deerfield flyers office supplies uh to a certain degree but yeah. yes a lot of here i mean all of my printing all my copies all you know all of that stuff was being handled so by ten thousand dollar increase is just an estimate i i doubt he was using that much but i i, don't know. I can't believe I, it either well i mean i we've got like this is so let me see what's gone up so well, most of it is utilities. Yeah, no. so so five thousand dollars of that is utilities. Cable television, that's the big one. All oh, right. Yeah. That also includes twenty four seven internet. Right. All of our patient care reports, our medical records aren't stored on site. TV. That's you know, we have to protect that. That's HIPAA okay. compliant All stuff. Right. So we have a vendor in the cloud, off site, safe okay. storage. So we have twenty four seven redundant. Um, internet connection for all of our patient care reports and some cable television thrown in. So that's that. So utilities is the real boss. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Thank you. And do you have water and sewer in there somewhere? Uh, utilities. Utilities. Under that $5,000. So Deerfield's assessment um, that I said $327,000, 576 yep. <laughs> Uh, does represent a 0.16% increase from last year. The, the so for 000, that, I apologize. The $100,000 operational reserves, how does that get used? What's the procedure that you go through to use that if you need to? Uh, I assume that's a reserve fund for, for the department. That's a slush fund like we got one. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so the board would have to... A, approve its use or whatever and then my understanding was that there was an agreement with the finance committee or something for its transfer or something to I I we've, ne I, we've never I, made a transfer. We've, we've used it once and and what I um, was told by DOR and by Tom Scanlon was that the select board needed to sign off on it and they yeah. did yeah. okay yeah we know now, is your building totally set up now so you have everything you need in there? Uh, we saw the diesel exhaust capture system, I would anticipate to see on an FY21 um, as a capital investment, maybe. Um, that's still 
pending. But other than that, we are all set up. How much do you estimate debt to be real rough dollars? Less 15, than 10,000? Oh, less than 20, I believe, for a three vehicle system. So how, did, how what's that for? Yes, so that is I, when you start the vehicle, it takes the exhaust and sucks it out of the building. Yeah, yeah. So away, so people aren't breathing that. Products of combustion, diesel fumes are known carcinogens. No, so I, 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 whenever you have somebody working cohabitating with diesel vehicles, especially, mm -hmm. this is the standard. Uh, beside, we're we're talking about doing that for the South Deerfield Fire District, and it's going to be eighty thousand. So I, I know there's a lot more vehicles. They have eight bays bigger, over yeah. there. Yeah, we so only have right three. now. You just use a hose coming out the door. We don't have anything right now. Um, so, so I, I, when that vehicle is started, it's, it's, it's you open the door immediately. Y yes. Yeah. You open the door, you turn the truck on, but there's still some particulates. So wow. you've got the, the carcinogen concern. You've got the concern of it getting on the equipment, um, that is currently in the bay because that's where our storage okay. is. Um, and then whatever liabilities and that you don't just exist. drive, they can't push the truck out. No, I mean, it would but seem you that drive you the truck want out some sort of, yes. Yeah. No, the trucks aren't I mean, run in the bay. Yeah, but my question then is, yeah. is this thing hooked up to the truck? Yeah. Well, it would. So it, it would. would. There, yeah. There's an yeah. electromagnetic couple that goes over the, mm -hmm. the, exhaust. the exhaust. When the truck turns on, it starts a van and yeah. evacuates only that exhaust gas instead of dumping all the heat out of the bay. Just the and then as the vehicle drives out, it crosses the threshold, the electromagnetic and it, releases, and then the truck leaves. So how does it get hooked up to the truck? when a truck comes back. When you're backing in and you're using a spotter, that individual on the okay. driver's side, as you back up, will marry it up, the electromagnetic touch, and then it just And if we'd built the garage truck. right, so you were driving it in and driving it out, uh, similar thing, somebody would have to be there. Once it got in, they'd, they'd stick it on as soon as it went in the building, or? Uh, they did build it right. They just didn't know what the capability was at the time. Well, they can't, you can't drive it in. That's the thing. You well, we back, back in. in. But, yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's the same procedure when you back in. You just you stand yeah, there, and as you back in. I know. But the issue is. As soon as he gets there, puts it in, and then he gets out of the way as soon as he gets run over. Yes. Yeah. To me, the issue is. It's all side exhaust. It should so it's, have been a safety and concern and dressed as soon as you moved in. Can I ask her? Well, but you don't want to it, wait for the carbon monoxide. Yeah, well, it's not the, the issue isn't answer. carbon monoxide. The issue is the part, the diesel particulate, which wouldn't trigger a carbon monoxide alarm. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. but it seems like you haven't prioritized that on your capital budget. I, it's I, I'm moving as fast as I can with. Now, with would you prioritize emergency, a, a smaller emergency vehicle over that? Which has been removed from I our. Understand that. Yeah, so we're prioritizing the job that we do, which is responding to emergencies. Um, the fact that we had to push this request off an additional year in a new building, you know, it just we don't have unlimited funds, so we have to we have to prioritize. So somewhere. I'm going to address this to you and to the member of the board of oversight. When are you going to start paying rent? So July it's addressed. It's addressed to both of you, but it's, sure. it's directed over that way. July first. We signed the lease agreement. Did you tell the selectman's office so they could start billing? <laughs> well, I would think that uh, Zach would have sent the lease agreement to you. I I should have a copy of it, or I should have the original. Yes. It, it needs to be signed by the respective select boards. So my understanding was that it's in the hands of the respective select boards. So what has been? Deerfield Select Board, Waitley Select Board, and Sunderland Select Board all need to sign off on it. And yeah, they haven't done that yet. Okay. okay. We just want, I would just wanted to find out where that was. But is that retro retroactive to July 1st? It is. And there are representatives of all those select boards on my board of oversight. So oh, no, they, are, they are aware that it's not, it's not for lack of. Uh, so the rent that's on here for earlier years is we're not going to get. That's already been paid. Yeah. 
Uh, uh, we didn't have, there wasn't any rent. We weren't rent paid. By the yeah. district that received the full Yeah, amount. this is really, yeah, they weren't really rent. in until June, June mm -hmm. this, right. this last year, so they were still paying rent to the fire district. Go ahead. Uh, just out of curiosity, going back to the director's salary, it's uh, it comes up about 10.3%, which is much higher than most any other. Yeah, it's not representative. So the FY19 budget that was passed, which is what you see there, mm -hmm. um, there was a fiasco with my salary in previous years. I wasn't moved over to the upgraded class comp study and I m and actually never received a step or a cola in the preceding year. So you'll see if you look at okay, yeah, all right. yeah. So if you look at like 2018, 2018 was an estimation. I was below that, and it stayed below that. So 2019. Okay. It's. I know. I, 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 I know. I know. I, it's. I'm actually. I think you're at step ten really now. Really get caught in the same cycle uh, now that this conversation comes up. I'm only budgeted for a 2% increase, not a step, right, only a 2% right. in FY20. It's step because he's already. at the top. Right yeah. The top. yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Good catch. Anyone else? I've got another couple of questions, but since I've hogged a little bit of it, anybody else want to? You're the to boss, keep going. Yeah. Uh, what's the ambulances? The newest one, what year did we actually take possession of that, or when did we take possession of that? Give or take a, a couple of weeks. <clears throat> 2016? I think it's a model year 2017. We got it in 2016. I'm thinking April. Or 20, I, I remember that, April being the, the I, time frame. Or 2018. Did we get it? How yeah, long have we no, had that? The, the actual year, not, yeah. Yeah. I, I, it's got to be 20. It's gotta be two, you only have it. It was either 16 or 17. I don't think you had it in 17. Was it 17? Was it 17? It's, it's either late 17 or early 18. Oh, wait a minute. If you, I can look it up right now or if you have it. Oh, no, nope, I wouldn't. Sorry. No, um, no. And that replaced it's not the, the so-called Waitley Ambulance? No. That, Correct, yeah. No. The, the 2000, that replaced yeah. a model year 2000. So which, the next one that you get is replacing which? It would be replacing the 2010 International, okay. which has proven to be unreliable and cost prohibitive to maintain. And that would leave us with a 2000, is that a 2005? It is a 2007, okay. um, which has low mileage and has proven quite reliable. It's also relegated to third line duty, so it does yep. our sporting event standbys, it goes into backup service. So the wear and tear on the vehicle is considerably less. Our, Two frontline ambulances are the ones that see all of the call volume. Mm -hmm. So that third line truck, whichever one is in that slot in the rotation, gets very little use and that, that truck has proven very reliable. It's and also a Ford, so it goes to Greenfield with all the other vehicles and it's, it's a quick turnaround. So is that the one that's in the second position now or is that? Correct, yeah. Our international ambulance has been out of service for <clears throat> Uh, going on a week now, this time with steering box troubles. So, and that was a trip down to West Springfield. That's so, internationals. Yeah. Take a tow down or you could really No, we were it. able to drive it down, um, thankfully, that so. time. Those tows are expensive on that international mm -hmm. truck. Um, so, it, which will be the, by replacing that one, that's been not including the diesel. That thing gets about six miles per gallon or whatever. Not including the diesel, it's over. A dollar, it's closer to a dollar fifty a mile to operate just through maintenance and repairs, and it has to go to West Springfield. And if it breaks down, that's a two thousand dollar heavy, heavy uh, duty tow. By replacing it with a sister ambulance to our most recent one, which is another Ford Greenfield for regular brake service, regular oil change, tows are significantly less, and commonality between all of our equipment. So our crews are be much more familiar with checking now, the fluids. Can, and can like we that. use, or have you investigated? I know there was some discussion of. It using uh, the highway department we to talk, do the, the oil changes. Yeah, and, and yeah, we initiated that conversation a number of years ago. At the time, there was a question about how do we transfer the money over? I mean, that's trivial, but a problem. You know, how do we off, offset their, because that's increased work for them. So what does that do to their staffing? Um, and then the other issue is certain things, um, 
there are there's an emergency vehicle maintenance repair person certification mm -hmm. um, that the dealership in Greenfield and, and yeah. down in West Springfield maintain because they they work on emergency vehicles. So then you've got the question of liability. You do a brake job or something like that, and then yeah. they go out. Where's your certification? What are they used to? Dump trucks, and then you go down that rabbit hole. No, I was so. thinking more of the, the routine, uh, the 2,500-mile, 4,000-mile, whatever it is. Oil, oil changes change and things like that. And those kinds of yeah, things. Yeah, I'll talk to Kevin <coughs> again about it. Yeah, I don't know what position he's Mostly in. Mostly because if you're going to do that, I assume you send the truck in a person who goes and sits no, we drop the vehicle off, and we. So now you got two people, one to go, one to go up, one to drive the truck, and one to yeah. go pick up the guy. So we staff it when we have an yeah. extra person on, or I'm yeah. on duty. So it's you know it's kind of we, we'll combine it with another mission. So I'll drop the ambulance off at <coughs> Ford. They'll go restock drugs at the hospital. They'll pick me up on their way home. That type yeah. of stuff. So I mean, it, it's it's simply, I don't imagine you're going to save a whole lot by taking it here, other than. You can take it off and you can drop it off and pick it up. Oh, sure. Convenience, convenience or, or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. And, oh, so when is that the ambulance, what's the plan for replacing the, the 2010? It would just, we would enter back into our regular five-year replacement schedule. So we would set aside $50,000 a year until we reach $250,000, which is our estimation for the ambulance replacement. So uh, 2025. 2025 would be. The, no, the, the, the 2010. Yes. The, the no, the, the two thousand international. The international. That's this year. That's in the capital. Yeah, community. right. So the the capital request this year is to replace the international. Then five years later, the 2010 would be up. Five years from the date. The 27. Uh, yeah. 20, 2017 right, would be 22. The, the international is the 2010. I think we're missing. Oh, my God. You're right. Wait, yes, wait, 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 wait a minute. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> yes. Here's, the yeah. issue. Here's what we're talking about. So that's I, what, what you I mean believe. being late. So he needs to get home and go to bed. No, so what, can, what, yeah. I, what I believe we're talking about is replacement schedule. <laughs> so we're talking about we have a brand new vehicle yep. that's going to be replaced in five years. No, no, no brand new vehicle is going to be replaced in five years. No, no. So the, the 2010, let me make sure I correct myself. Okay, the 2010 right. International would be replaced now, right. which is this capital request. Then, so somewhere in, in 2020, we will get that vehicle no. a year from now. No. Uh, yeah, so yeah, yeah, that's, that's yeah. Yes, yes, yes. The, the current capital request, yes. So yes. sometime in 2020, well, for this one. Um, we will we will get the first replacement mm -hmm. for the international. Then five years later, our 2007 okay. ambulance will be due to be replaced. Okay. Uh, and so at that point, it'll be? 2025. 2025. Give or take. Yeah, how old is it? 2025. 2025. 15, 16, 18, 18 years old. Oh, 18. Oh, yeah, yeah, at mm -hmm. that point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but it's a low mileage, and, and, and after and we get the new ambulance, it's going to be a third line ambulance. Yes, here. correct. Yeah. So n now that we have two reliable vehicles for first and second line duty, <clears throat> you know, we'll be leaning on that one even less than we're leaning on it now. Yeah. Okay. Any further questions? The, the last one I have is legal expense. Legal expense <clears throat> is related to. Personally, if I'm on the phone with counsel working out an issue. Um, uh, where, town council or your yes. council? Yep. So, town, it, it, so they, they, they bill, bill it you? to South County EMS through. You have your own lawyer. It's through the town. It's, it's all it's well, town council. Because we have a fixed fee. Is it labor issue or is it a, is it a general insurance? General um, it's it, well, they're they're general billed the question. indirect costs based on on uh, indirect costs are associated with what the town pays generally, but this is if he has anything specific yeah, so that they would bill him for separately. This is this oh, is it's not included in our, in our no no. Our, no. This is like personnel stuff, employment stuff. We have incurred expenses related to those things. We still are based on even though you're a town employee. You have your own legal stuff. This is, this is like, from what I understand, the current contract with, with uh, Mead is, is that 
um, we pay the $3,000 a month, but if there's any labor council issues or employment issues, those are billed separately, and we are paying those separately. So that would be the same case with, with scams, is that if they had any labor uh, legal costs associated with that, that, that would be charged to them directly. I agree 100% because yeah. that's what we just approved, that labor would be hourly, is the amendment I made. Right. And the general insurance, general legal expenses would be based on lump sum. Now, I'm not sure, it, it, this is all labor related. Cor correct. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions? No. The cable TV that you get <laughs> in a public building, you're supposed to get the cable dropped to the building free with basic channels. And then you have to pay for extra beyond that, like internet and whatever mm -hmm. else. And that's what you got your four thousand dollars in there for, forty two fifty. Yeah. So that's the majority of that is internet. That that's a that's a mission critical infrastructure that we need to have in order okay. for our medical records. So we actually have redundancy built into that. So if a tree falls on the line outside or something like that, we have backups. We can still. Okay. Uh, upload that. Could you do it in the past? Cross your fingers. <laughs> Legitimately, yeah. And and we were at the mercy of where we were sure. renting from. So mm -hmm. South Deerfield Fire, mm -hmm. that type of thing. We yeah. So the last question I have is OPEB. Is what I started with. You're going to go back to your group to ask to have them put some money in there. Is that what you're going to do? Yeah. Well, everybody knows that the next budget cycle starts the second you approve this one. So. I know. Um, it'll be OPEB, it'll be indirect costs yeah. calculation. Yeah. I agree. There's, yeah. Um, I'm going to be meeting with Diana on insurance, and I will, you probably can expect an increase in insurance. Sure. Because the 200 is not realistic at all. You mean like liability insurance and stuff like that? or Liability, liability. building. Yeah, no, vehicles. Building, they should vehicles. be paying separate. Vehicles? Vehicles. Any, vehicles they pay separate. Huh? <coughs> vehicles are separate. Yeah, they, they, pay, they pay for their vehicles. Yeah, vehicle insurance, $2,000. Yep. $2,000 for vehicle insurance. Let me give you an example. Liability is two hundred. I belong to Dedic too. Dedic has a bunch of old fogies. All we do is sit in the room and talk, schedule maintenance down to the uh, park, and with all that, we have basic liability policies to cover. You know what those policies cost? Two and a half thousand dollars a year. Mm -hmm. yep. So when you tell me that somebody's paying $200. $50 or $75, it's so ridiculous, just like I agree that the indirect cost has to be adjusted, that has to be adjusted also. I, we've, we've yeah, right now they're paying $23,000 for that. Yeah, we've gone, we've gone around <laughs> and around on, on trying to break out what our share, what the EMS department's share of that is, and we keep getting back like, it doesn't, it's not a la carte like that. You know, that there's, there's an amount for a town with an EMS department, and this is what it is, and we don't know how much of that is, is divvied up. So I, if we could be more exact, if we could make sure that these costs are being represented adequately and shared appropriately, I'm all for it. I'm not going to fight I'm anybody cool. on that. I'll be That's checking it out. Yeah. Yeah. I'll be checking yeah. it out. I have, a, I have a mission. You have a mission? No. Yeah. Now, one other thing you could do is you could check with this uh, EMS group that's up around Goshen. There's a three or four or five town uh, group up there, and they run their own thing. You could maybe be able to find out from them what they pay for liability. It's a little apples and oranges with them. You're, no, you're welcome to look. They're a very different type of entity than we are, uh, both in the services they provide, the size of their department, things like that. So. Another one, in addition to DEDIC, when I was running the electrical business, run three or four hundred thousand dollars worth of business, and I pay in thousands of dollars for liability. Yeah. And you guys are in a more dangerous situation than I am. Electrical is one of the safest there is. Yeah, one but my people are already hurt when I see them. <laughs> yeah, but it's also the insurance for uh, <coughs> if you happen to drop a stretcher. Oh, yeah, of course. You know, yeah, malpractice, course. I guess you might call it. Yeah. Right. That's got to be huge, I would think. 
So we agree yeah, on what you're going <coughs> to. I think we're happy. <laughs> what do you want for a motion? Do you want a motion <laughs> to authorize them to? Uh, well, it's either, it's either that or you can make a motion to adjourn and see what. Yeah, it is. <coughs> but I don't why don't you make why you make, either, but, uh, why don't you make this motion first? You want this motion first? <coughs> yeah. How do you plan on addressing the OPEP? You're gonna just guess that next year. Figure in there or what? I'm gonna lean on the experts to figure out exactly what we think we need to be and whatever the the guidance is. Okay. I'm certainly no expert in OPEP. Are you I'll make a motion that we approve the SCAMS Enterprise Fund budget with the only exception being that they have to look at <laughs> the OPEB figure and put in a figure commensurate with based upon the Odyssey uh, report that we received back for GASB 75. For FY20. For fiscal year 20, yeah. So we're not, we're not really approving this budget. Yeah, we are. So, so they, what do we they do? They've got to turn around and do something with well, the I, mean, I don't know what the dollar value is. I can't. Is that for next year or for this year? This year is for next, next year. year. For, for next year, 20, yeah. 21 or 20? 20. This, this is, is 20, 20, right? right? No, this is 19. So this is no, 20. this is 20. 20. 20. 20. So you're 20. thinking. For, right, for our next for annual budget that oh, we're Oh, 21. Have. Okay. Okay. That, I agree with All right, that. All right, so you, yeah. okay. you're, you're say, for FY21. So the, do it. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. We got a motion to second it. I assume this is for three hundred and twenty-seven thousand five hundred and seventy-six dollars. Correct. Mm -hmm. Discussion. My only concern is that this is representing a step plus the cola. Is that correct? That's what those numbers represent. I agree. It's uh, my concern also. I'm just concerned that the select board have, have not voted that yet. It's sort of how we've managed all of the other payroll budgets. No, There's no, one. This is opposite. Just, actually, this is the actually opposite. It's, it's the opposite of what um, the yeah. other budgets have been voted at uh, for this year. Oh, okay. This they, we did it the other way around last year, but this year, just this way. This, this is not a reflection on Zach. No. No, no This no, is, no. I know. again, procedure, yep. once again. Who's got, a, who's got a calculator? I do. If it been, uh, you take the Would you like to know what the difference is? is? Yeah, I was going to say that, yes. uh, yeah, Dad go for it. Go ahead. Or to well, the town's difference. 461 300 Five thousand dollars. I was going to say it was, it was it was it was four thousand dollars just for the divided for the full time staff because yeah. I calculated it earlier. Four fifty two. Yeah. Two fifty four. That includes all all those three line items: the part time, overtime. <clears throat> no, I didn't do part time. Uh, all I did is I did well, the. Well, uh, increased by the he's, same amount. He's, it's five thousand includes the part timers. And the overtime. Yeah, it's five thousand is not enough. No. It was 4,400 for the full timers, mm -hmm. and that's most of your budget. What about the overtime? Where'd you get the 450? Oh, no. um, I didn't figure gotcha. it on the overtime. Overtime was not figured, so we have a calculation. You the full time staff increase for overtime that doesn't include the, the same calculation. I, I, when it came to comparison between last, oh, I understand. Be, yeah, but I, in my quick and dirty little I, I, comparison, all budgets I did. include the two percent increase. Nine, all eight, personnel eight. budgets include. 1.063. That's my question. No, uh, all the other budgets did not include the. No, I'm talking about skims. We have we have um, uh, uh, personnel costs 104,000. 1 million and that all that it, that includes two percent cola. That's what Zach is telling us. Yes. Okay. And so don't, don't if it's. Includes 2% coal. If you just take the 461, 300, mm -mm. divided by 1.02, there's the 2%, which gives you 452, 254. Do the same thing to full time overtime, divide that number by 1.02, and do the same thing to the call staff. Although, is the call staff, is that paid on, on a salary schedule? 
I'm coming up with $12,942. Grand total, that sounds about right. Yeah. So take 50% more than, than standard step raise. No. Well, yes, it is. Approximately 50% more. Full time more. staff is a 6% increase. Right. Should be a 2%. 461 no, divided by 434. Depending so the where they fall is 2%. On, I'm talking about the standard step is between anywhere between 5 and 3 and 4%. Five and a half to four percent. But, but you have some people that are already at the top step. We so have Zach, one. Zach is. We have two. Is an, have, I was you and one other. I was employer. going to say there's there's a second one. Yeah, there's two. Yeah. So the numbers we're calculating, you know, <coughs> I just don't think it's fair to approve a budget that has a cola in it, no, but we haven't approved any of the sharing. budget yeah. that has a cola. I agree. It should make sense now. We should, should all be the same. We should be consistent. Yeah. So what would you like to do? I'm going to vote it down. Should we bring it back next week? Adjust it? Well, we can, do, we can do that. We just need to do vote. something. That's all. Okay. Okay. It's voted. It's then a I'll second. I'll my motion. Then I'll make a motion to table this next week. Ask, ask your so oh, I don't know. what is it going to take for us to vote this next week? A decision. Don't a wait. decision by the select board. Right. A final well, that decision. That would be nice. But if we don't board. get a decision by the select I, board, what would you like to vote? I would like it to just... Be presented consistently with the other payroll budgets that mm -hmm. will have the same okay. problem. Yeah. So that's the two percent. Yeah. No. That's that's the step, step only. The 2%. And two percent would step ten plus. Yeah, that he's saying the difference is the two percent. Whatever is, is what Skip I'm was not. saying. You guys were talking clear the same language just we're allowing we voted the step. I think we all know what it's doing. So let's <laughs> you know the motion on the table is what? There is no motion. The motion it was withdrawn and the second motion was made to table it. That's what I thought. And the only, and thing, no. on motion the only thing I want to know table. is if we're going to take this up next week, what is it that has to change in this budget? That's all I'm asking. It's very simple. OPEP. <laughs> well, <laughs> hey. I think what needs to be changed is the select. It's up to the select. No, I think what needs to be changed in the budget is the salary line item. That's one. So there, there are, hmm. okay, so there are three salary line items. There's the full-time staff. The director's salary stays because it's, it's the step 10. Only step, yeah. yeah. Uh, so full-time staff, full-time overtime, and call staff. Yeah. Those are the three that need to be adjusted. I believe that's correct. What's wrong with call staff? Didn't I they just would say also call staff? Receive a, they would also receive a cost of living increase. The, the, every, all the cost, call staff people are fixed at a, at a grade and step. Yeah. So if there's no COLA, their, their hourly rate does not change. So they're just 2% COLA. I don't have a problem with that one. That's consistent with everybody well, I've else. Got a, I, well, no, it's not. That's the thing. It's not We consistent. don't have anybody like that. <clears throat> That's a special, they're not on the classification schedule. They're on the SKIMS classification schedule. Yeah, but it's a 2% COLA. That's I understand. That's, I mean, that's fine. For, yeah, for, well, that's all for, I'm saying. If, they, if the only raise they're going to get 2%, that's okay. Well, that's, so that's not an issue then. Right. It's just full-time That's all I'm staff. saying. Full-time staff. Yeah. Are, are, they on a, are they on a salary schedule? No, not on, not on. They're not on the town salary schedule. The call staff is not on the salary schedule. No, no, they well, they don't increase. They are on the salary schedule. Right. So right. an EMT right. basic is a grade whatever three step one. Yeah, and period. So if they have ten years on the job or they have one year on the job, they're a grade three step one. If we vote a COLA, and so that, that salary schedule shifts 2% to reflect cost of living, then all of our per diem members would receive that new, that new adjusted So rate. they would not be on the salary step anymore? No, they would be. It's just that they'd be, it, if there you're- There is none. There is none. That's my feeling. I don't huh? think there is one. No, they, they would not be on step one because step one would- Changes every year. Wouldn't change. Right. And now he's, it's going he's, up. he's saying they get no raise unless there's a 2% COLA voted correct. to change that correct. step. That's correct. Okay. So the call, the call staff 
has a 2% increase in it. In, in the budget as presented tonight? Yes. 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 So until that's resolved by the selectmen, we're going to take it out. That's what, that's what, they're, that's what you guys are asking him. Yes. Have, yes. yes. Can I just have a little bit of the context with this budget, with the, with the regional agreement and everything, and how, I just would want to know how that will cascade down to the other towns, or if it doesn't affect them. Uh, well, I would, that's a great question. I don't know. I, the, this would effectively adjust the budget down. I've already presented in Sunderland, and I told them that if a COLA was not voted for in Deerfield, then that number would decrease. So they voted on this number, understanding that this was the max, but it may be lower. Um, I'm supposed to present in Waitley next week, next Tuesday, and they have the same information ahead of time. So I. I'm happy to rework this budget. I'm not going to have a boo meeting in between now and then. I, I can show you what the budget looks like without that 2% in it. The boo of approved the budget with the understanding that this we would only pay the COLA if it was approved by the town of Deerfield. If it wasn't, then we wouldn't be paying it. So um, I think that's consistent, your, what you're saying, with what the boo voted. Um, so I think everybody's in line, um, and I don't think Sunderland or Waitley would be upset to hear that, you know, it's lower. Um, what, does that answer? Um, yes, and did you already go, I mean, have you already presented to the other finance committees? Just Sunderland. Waitley is next week. Okay. And then uh, what happens if the Deerfield Select Board does approve the COLA? We revote all the budgets. Okay. All right. That was what was agreed to by the chair. None of the budgets have a call, no. except for this one. All right. So we're going to take the cola out. And if we take the cola out, is there anything else that needs to be changed in the budget before we vote it? That's my question. If there isn't, no, then like you know there's no need to ask Zach to come back. Uh, we can then assume that we're going to vote it next week. We'd have the numbers, <clears throat> and then if the selectmen decide to put the two percent back in, then we'll have to revote it. But that will be the same for everything. It'll be consistent. Set. So can we? Then we have a motion to table it. Yes. And we know yes. it needs to change. Yes. Is there a second to the motion to table? I seconded it. Seconded. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor of tabling the budget? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Nay. Whatever it is. <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> one, uh, six, one, six, zero. Six, one, zero. Okay. In Zach, I just yeah. want to make sure that from you understand the, this is no reflection on I, I get it. More of yeah. a procedural thing. Budget. Yeah, I, no, yeah, no, well, no, yeah, I've got a, I have to swing dance with budget. three different Just towns. Oh, yeah. So sometimes, oh, I it, yeah, I you know, um, presenting, you know, I hate to call it worst case because, you know, if yeah, it's your paycheck, you don't think it's worst case. But I prefer to present a higher number, especially, you know, in general, and have to go back and ask for less than the opposite. So, I don't. Um, I will. Tomorrow, I will just prepare another one um, with the note that it's less the cola, and I'll forward it to Brenda. Is that the correct? I guess. Yep. Unless, do you have all the information to do it with? I don't. Okay. No. So he can he can do that for me. Yeah, and then in the end, I think administratively or whatever, as long as all three town meetings approve the same budget, right? Th I and mean, that's where the rub comes in. Exactly, so, making yeah. sure that everybody yeah. has the right right. So version. in the end, you know, whatever the, the yeah. town meeting is, as long as that's consistent, and we, and we will know by then, right? I, I just found <laughs> Let's hope. Right. I think it's just a job. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't want to bet a whole lot on okay. it. <laughs> okay. Is there any objection to having a motion to adjourn? Yes. Oh. Can we discuss tomorrow evening? 
I have one point. I don't know how, how are we going to handle tomorrow evening when oh, we when have capital uh, capital planning at five. Okay. And the, are we going to adjourn by? Are we going to read? Are we going to meet tomorrow at six to go to the school? Finance committee going to meet? I, well, I was planning on going to the school, but there's no. We don't need to have a finance committee meeting to do that. Okay. There's going to be a joint right. meeting with finance, capital, yep. and. But it's not, so, so it's not an official meeting. Whatever, the, whatever, the, whatever the, town, the town administrators put together, if it covers the selectmen, it covers the, the, all three of us. Right. My understanding. It's, it's okay. selectmen are going to meet at 4 o'clock. The uh, capital improvement committee is scheduled for 5. And then I believe 6 o'clock is the Deerfield, Deerfield Elementary Same School. Same thing that we went Same through. Same thing that we did before. Okay. The capital improvement committee will uh, adjourn because we don't need to attend uh, the Deerfield Elementary. But if you're on the Finance Committee, then obviously well, we Then I make a motion we adjourn. Aye. Aye. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? You forgot to take it public I'm opposed. Well, you, 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 no, we're, okay. Do, let me. My turn? Sure. I, I just wanted to uh, take a couple of minutes and uh, talk to you about the, uh, hiring a couple of people for the Board of Health and Building uh, Inspections Department. I know that uh, Diana and I think Carolyn spoke to you at your last meeting, and uh, you, I got the message that you probably weren't real receptive to that. And I just wanted to inform you guys how important that this really is. To give you an example, because we don't have enough staff, we, the planning board made a couple of decisions yesterday. And instead of paying somebody in that office $30 or $40, we're paying $1,200 to have our lawyers draft the decision. We have imposed fees in the tunes of $16,000 for disturbed uh, land area. Uh, it's been a month. We haven't collected that because there's nobody to create the bills and, and document all this stuff. Uh, we're involved in some sort of litigation uh, for the same. There wasn't proper notice given on decisions. Um, there's a lot of people waiting for inspections and paperwork that doesn't get done. Uh, people who have invested heavily in our community have waited months on end for written decisions. Um, they have uh, been come here paying thousands of dollars to engineers and attorneys to be turned away because things weren't properly posted because there wasn't anybody to do this. Our building department generates hundreds of thousands of dollars in fees, and it only costs the town under $100,000. It's the only department in town that even comes close to actually generating money for us to offset our tax base. Uh, South County EMS does a good job of creating you know, revenue to offset their budget, as does the police department. Right? They generate $100,000 more through court fees and ticketing and things like that. But the building department actually puts hundreds of thousands of dollars in our, our budget. And we're relying on two very dedicated part-time people that are probably not going to be with us much longer. And we're going to have a big problem. I mean, we're already having to sweet talk some uh, clients, if you will, or customers because their paperwork aren't getting done, their inspections aren't getting done, uh, their permits aren't getting done. And it just, you know, I think that it really needs to be uh, taken a lot more seriously and, and we need to go forward with that. Um, so just let me just ask you sure. a quick question. I'm, I'm not being a smart ass. That's okay. What have we been doing for the past 20 years? Uh, and, I, you know, it's like, are we just finding this out now? No. It's, it's surprising. It's, Right. It's it's not it's not we're not just finding out we've been we've been lucking out on some things and you know recently I know of one business that's building a building in Hatfield now that was going to come to Deerfield and it's going to be a 12 million dollar building we we missed out on that I know that the, the Cumberland Farms thing the Tom Reedy from there told us he was going to walk a number of times because they couldn't get stuff done. And, between Dick and myself, you know, pleading and say, look, this is going to, we're going to work this out. The same thing happened with the, uh, the machine shop people, and they're still, 
you know, I got an email from them saying that they're having a problem with the easement stuff. There's, there's just nobody in that office. I mean, Dick, he, he works here probably 40 hours a week. He only gets paid for 19. And he comes here in the morning at, you know, quarter after 7, 7.30, and he's off making inspections at Eagle Brook or, or wherever he has to do. He gets dragged into, you know, disputes with Dedick and the town and lawyers. Priscilla, another 19-hour, uh, you know, a week person, comes in an hour early, leaves an hour late. She'll be, you know, making out all kinds of uh, paperwork, and then, you know, the town administrator goes and says, hey, can you take care of this for me? Then somebody comes in and says, well, I need this thing to, you know, that work doesn't get done. So she tries to get it done, then the next day she comes in and finds out, well, in the bottom of this pile was a meeting that was supposed to be posted that now has to be postponed. You know, and, and seems like I've heard that before. Yeah. So and yeah. I, I you know, it's <clears throat> I my the only so I've been doing I've been involved in the finance committee and when I first was involved with it, Bernie was the was the town administrator. Then Casey was the town administrator. And then Doug was the town administrator. Wendy was in there in between. And now we're on our fifth town administrator that I've worked with. And it's just the past two weeks that this information, I, it's so, it's mind-boggling. I'm not disagreeing. It's like, why is it taking us so long to get to the point of saying, look, that department needs to be reorganized? What? And, and it, to a certain extent, you're right. Uh, but I know last fall when we hired uh, the assistant town administrator, um, I forget his name already, but Connor. he was here for Connor for a very short time. You know, uh, I took him aside and I, and I directed him into the building department to start, you know, working yeah. on some of the stuff, you know, and um, he was extremely uh, instrumental on securing the last solar field that we did because they came in because they were bumped and bumped and bumped. They had one week to get a public hearing done so they could apply to get their credits through the state for their solar field. Connor, that night during our meeting, went in and typed everything all up, got it into the newspaper, called them the next morning, pleaded with them, got it to, in that paper. So we had our meeting and it was properly posted and the whole deal went through. That resulted in a net income of it's gonna be close to 35 or $36,000 a year to the town over the next 20 years. Those are the types of things that are, you know, we've just barely been making it by, you know? Um, and like I said, I, you know, uh, Mr. Kalashevsky's not gonna be here a lot longer, and we need to get somebody in here that can do this, but they also need the support because they're out doing their job, and all this paperwork just piles up and it gets, pushed into this office, sometimes it gets pushed over there, or that stuff gets, there's just not enough people in the town to do all this work. A um, couple of things. Um, the select board have allowed the planning board, the conservation commission, and the ZBA not to take minutes of their meetings. They're, I, they're being done by either select board staff or Priscilla. When, when the Conservation Commission walks into a meeting, they have a, something that's already prepared for them. Their minutes are prepared. They don't have to do anything but read the minutes, say and agree to them. We've put additional duties on Priscilla so she can't do the work that she needs to do. Okay. We have had a vacancies in the select board staff for over three years that have either been hired and quit or not hired at all. This is not, the re I think if we were to come up with a staffing plan and implement it, that we might be able to get away with one full-time person in the, the Board of Health slash Inspection Services. That was my recommendation last week, and I still stand by it. Well, but my concern is that Select Board also allowed to, go, to have um, a part-time um, building this commissioner inspector um, working, and also we hired a full-time one, and we didn't keep him for over six months. And that took almost a year to hire that person. Right. 
So the, the problem that we have is getting staff hired. That's true. And if we were to hire the staff and see if we then have a problem, I would agree with you. Well, but if you don't require the boards to do their work, and just allow them to come and sit and make recommendations or review whatever they have to review and not take minutes and make that responsibility of a person that's not there in their job description. I think it's you're misleading the, the public and why they more people are needed. Well, I, to, to, to answer your questions, Bruce, uh, the planning board does take their own minutes. Uh, you know, uh, Paul Alice does that, and he prepares that for the planning board, and, and he has for some time. The Conservation Commission, you're right. I, I'm not sure who. I believe it might be Pat Kroll, watches the videotape and prepares the minutes for them, but I think that's the only one that does. The and ZBA also. Okay, the ZBA as well. Um, whether or not we have uh, an assistant town administrator, which I know that we're looking for one. Now we only have Diana at, at the present moment and Pat. Uh, independent of that, you know, what I'm suggesting is that even if we had a, a, a second person in the select person's office, it still requires more people in the building department. I agree with you. And, and that's where we could either hire one full-time person. I would prefer to see two part-time people at 19 hours each. We wouldn't have to pay them benefits. We could get the, the, ex, the experience of seeing, you know, We'd have two people working for us and see which one we liked, and maybe after a year we could offer them a full-time position. That's uh, the other. I don't think so. But, well, but no, a lot of this yeah, stuff I doesn't just require just a lot of experience, like a town administrator. You need somebody that sits down and fill out these forms once or short. They do it. It's more like clerical type work that just needs to, you know, to disseminate this information or whatever. Look this up and prepare it for the board or whatever. Um, you know, just giving people the paper, but. As it is, people come to the town hall, and you know, if Dick's out on, vac you know, um, on inspections, you know, there's nobody there. So then they migrate down here and over here, and they take up more time from these people. I mean, it, it was a problem with Wendy, and it's a problem with Diana that people go in there all the time, and they end up talking with them, whether it's a resident or a board member, and it, it just takes away from their time. Um, the the fee to the town council for twelve hundred dollars was due to. The um, the loss of uh, fur cog employee. We should have anticipated that, and we should have been looking for a, an assistant to do that type of work. We thought we had one, Connor. Yep. Um, but we haven't advertised again for that position. I, I think I think that we have. We we've advertised for the assistant town administrator we as have. well. Yeah. We have not uh, gone out with a job description uh, for the. Um, Town administrator. I'm sorry, the town administrator. Because I know that you and the personnel board are, are finalizing up that job description, and that's going to go out shortly. Uh, but the assistant has been. Uh, when is that the, due? Excuse me. When is that application due? For the assistant? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. But in the building department, we are looking for a, a replacement building inspector. But even if we had a full-time building inspector, that he won't take care of or won't be able to take care of all of the clerical work that needs that Priscilla now does. And well, that's what we've got one person doing two jobs right now at half time. Barely doing the job. I'm just and, saying. And this is this is why I wanted you all to understand what's going on. I mean, you know I know of, you know, like I said, twelve to fifteen thousand dollars that's not being collected because we just haven't uh, sent out the bills. And there's a problem with that in the beginning because there was nobody in the office to tell them they needed to pay this up front. Now, the planning board, you know, we said, you know, John Way did a good job saying, you know, you didn't pay these fees. We can't do this. Well, we'll do this. There's nobody, there's nobody follows up on it. And that's, you know, it just keeps coming back. And, and we're paying a lot of money for these other things. Um, we hire peer review people. The peer review person sends the bill, and we haven't even got the money from the, the uh, applicant because there's nobody there to do it, you know. And this is it's, it's it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And you know, quite honestly, you know, by law, when these people call for an inspection and nobody shows up, they can continue on doing what they want to do. Now, most contractors are pretty conscientious, and you know, they're going to hold up 
But it's, a, it's an expensive thing. I know there's guys on your board. I mean, you call in for a rough inspection, nobody shows up, and it's like, what do you do? Then you tell the, your contract, well, you can't insulate or drywall, and they're going to get mad at you, and, you know, the problem <laughs> just gets bigger and bigger. And it really is it's a public safety thing, because they do have the right to bury it and go forward, but, you know, then if the you know, inspector comes back, you know, then you get an argument, well, you had your time, you didn't do it, so, you know, then the customer's upset because they're thinking, well, you know, what got hidden here, and, you know, it, it just causes a lot of problems, and I can see going forward, it's just going to keep getting worse. So. Well, that is my opinion. I don't really think the door got slammed on the situation. I think with the situation was presented poorly in the sense that I th it was given out that you could hire a part-time secretary to do this work. Right. And I certainly don't feel comfortable with the amount of work because I do know what goes on in some of these rooms. And you're not going to hire somebody to step one grade one to do paperwork that's going to be able to fill in a position in these multiple offices. I said this years ago when I was an, when I was an assessor. Mm -hmm. At that point in time, I hounded on bringing in part-time people that could go from one office to the other and learn through attrition how the different offices work, as well as filling in for vacation. And all I got was ignored. Yeah. Okay. And I know the other, uh, uh, John uh, said the same thing. There have been multiple people in here, and I'm not blaming you because this is pre prior to your time. We all just gave up trying to uh, uh, assess that. Uh, I think the last one that kind of bounced around uh, to the different offices was probably Pat Kroll mm -hmm. until she got put on uh, part-time. She could fill in for Karen in the assessor's office and, and here and there, but that's been that's been a big hole right along. Right now, as you said, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Pat goes on vacation, there's nobody even there. Uh, Priscilla's only half-time to begin with because she's obligated to not work sure. more than half-time anyway. And there's huge holes in there, but the presentation was for somebody that would not be able to fill the position and I think our last instruction was bring back something, uh, a, 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 a good job back, description. Back a plan and explain it. It was not explained. They said, well, we got half of the person in this budget and half the person yeah, yeah. in that budget. Right. Well, we don't know how much it's going to cost, so we put in some extra and we put some extra in that budget. It was too wishy-washy. I see. The, the thing is, I think that we could... If you want somebody, make up a concrete proposal and we'll listen to it. You know, you can't turn around right. and say, well, we're going to put half in this budget and half in that budget, and you got a full-time person getting 22000 oh, but we're going to put in 24000 into this one. Well, I, I think that, uh, you know, hiring two part-time people, I think, would work well. I think it would be easier to get somebody to fill those positions like that. Um, and that, you know, it would be within that department being the building. And where are they going to put them? You're going to have three people working in that department? Uh, yeah. Three? No way. Well, they wouldn't be there all well, at the same time. There, there are three in know. there now. Well, there's two of them now. Now there's three. Well, if you count Wayne and yeah, the way well. Right. But so now you need two more. That's five desks in there? But they wouldn't all be there at the same time, Skip. That's what I'm saying. You know, Priscilla only works certain times. You could have somebody work Monday. And Tuesday, so, and work with Priscilla to kind of get the other thing. You can have somebody so else work. I'm going to guess that if I go and look at the budget that for that office, the mm -hmm. two budgets, yep. that there's a, there's enough money in the inspection budget. Yes. We haven't had somebody in there, so there should exactly. be. That you could actually hire somebody in there now. Right. Correct. And if there was an approval from town meeting to put another person in, then that one, you'd have the money as, as of July 1st. So, the point is, you could hire somebody tomorrow. Correct. If it was, but we just wanted to make sure that it would be funded going forward because we, we we don't want it so to start it and have if it stop. We, if we put but one person in there half time, nineteen hours, where would the other nineteen hour person end up being, and what would that person do? Or do you need three nineteen hour people in that? Office? I'm not saying that you. Yes, I am saying that you need three 19-hour people. Well, you need or a full-time person and then a part-time. Yeah. E either no. way, it works out. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't really know. But I, I, I just have always had good experience. If you, if you need somebody quick like that, and you can hire a part-time person. And, you know, maybe we'd be lucky to get another Priscilla, you know, someone who's semi-retired and comes in there, is very dedicated, has a lot of office experience. 
And I mean, you know, if you have office experience coming into this, of course things are different, they're put different ways, but you could pick that up pretty, you know, easily. Uh, it wouldn't cost the town as far as benefits and stuff go. That person might work out and it might not. But it, a lot of it is just, you know, getting the stuff done. The, uh, this, is, this is what I've seen over the last several years. And don't, don't want to point any fingers at anybody, but, uh, you know, we've, we've added somebody, we added somebody to the police department because we had uh, the school resource. All mm -hmm. right. So there's 180 days a year. What about the, the rest of the, so that person, I guess, ends up, I don't know what, and it has nothing to do with whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. It's just that right. they're there. Uh, where else did we hire somebody? Well, we hired, we hired a full-time building inspector. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing there five years ago. Dick was doing both of those jobs, and, and I, I don't know. I assume he was working more than, maybe he was working 40 hours a week at that point. I don't yeah, know. He was. Okay. He was. So... Uh, so he dropped out at 19 and we put somebody else in there. So we've got now two people. Uh, okay. Uh, now we need more. Where does it, where does it end? I guess it's just, we keep adding staff and that's, well, you, you don't, you, you, you add, uh, you yeah. added a full-time inspector that, that's not there right now. And, and yes. we're, we're looking for one, you know, we're, we're looking yep. for, for another person. Uh, but, but you're right. Dick did do both jobs for a long time, but the town was, pretty quiet for over the last 10 or 12 years. You know, there wasn't a lot of development and building and stuff going on. There was, was, there was a lot of money that was went that? into that office. DA was, the well, the science the, building. All right, DA, DA was, but yeah. I mean, a lot. there has been a lot more things. And since this marijuana thing come in, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on with that too. I mean, we, we really have been inundated. You know, all of the boards have been with, you know, some of these projects. I mean, we just kind of put the uh, last, the two marijuana, things, you know, are finished off. Uh, but prior to that, I mean, whether it was, you know, the, the um, solar field uh, True Corp or the solar field on the railroad yards or the solar field on Set Right Road, you know, all of these things create a tremendous amount of paperwork. I, I mean, it's, it's the stuff that they have to go through. And I mean, I see that facility, you know, looking at She's going page and page and, you know, are mistakes going to happen? Yeah, and they do happen, and, but they don't have enough time. They've only got so much, they've got to get this done. And they're under time constraints, unlike, well, I'm not sure about, I shouldn't say it like that, but they have 14 days sometimes to respond to this, or 30 days, or sometimes 48 hours, you know. And, you know, it's the applicants and the people that we're supposed to be serving that suffer for it. That's, That's all I'm saying. I'm saying that you're not going to hire part-time secretary yep. to be aware of all these rules and regulations. Exactly. But, and, but you get... And that's, that's what that... No, and going back a little bit... Just talk. It was suggested part-time help, and just, we got pushback from that. <laughs> well, I have to excuse it, myself. So. It, Thank it, you, Kip. I'm sorry to... Oh, that's all right. I get. That's all right. I, I, you know, I think that the board, I, I think that the select board is, is is going to, you know, move forward on getting somebody there. I just you well, know, wanted I, to. I'm not sure of that. What's that? The personnel board needs to have a job description before we hire anybody. Hire a part-time office person. We have to, I don't know. I, we, have we have job descriptions. Well, then, then. Well, make sure that that, that gets that was done as well. That supposed to happen. That's what the select board said at the last meeting. Bring job descriptions to the personnel board. They meet Monday night. Well, isn't it the personnel board's job to create the job no. descriptions? No. Review them only. Or review them. They're created by. No, so, so that's another last, thing. So last, now you got to have we... you got to have the person that doesn't exist create the job description for a person. No. That, you know. Yes. Who, who's going to do come it? Come on. Well, I'm asking you. Who would do it? What do you think? I don't know. Carolyn? Trevor? Town me? I think it's not going to happen. Town administrator. They, this is what, what I, we I, have a job do, description for a town administrator, part of our duties, yep. or his duties, but to do that. Do we have a job description for uh, Priscilla? Priscilla, probably. Would that suffice? I would think so. If you don't, I asked that question last meeting, and they said, would include more duties than what Priscilla is doing. I don't know. That's what you're telling us. 
I don't say more. The, the, the term more. It, there's more stuff to do, but it's not different. It's just then, more of the same you stuff. Then you just need to have a full-time staff person. Yeah. I think that would work. One, not one, not one and a half. It would be cheaper to have two part-time people. Well, the issue is you're going to try to get somebody to work Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Could, could, we, could we start with one half-time person? Yeah. And sure, see? I, anything would help. That no. would be my feeling. And I have the same description as Priscilla, but you can't hire at the same rate. No, it would but not you, be. You it wouldn't be the same. The same, rate. same grade, but yeah. not the same right. step. Right? Yeah. No, no, oh, no, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. But that's definitely. What you, you, I think you guys know me well enough. I, I'm <laughs> trying to do this as inexpensive as possible, no, but I, I see I the reality of it. No, it's I like agree with you. you know, I'm going to use this terminology. If you're an electrician, you stop buying wire because copper's too expensive. Where's your business going to end up? You know, and that's what's happening here, and I can see it. You know, we, we've, we have really dodged a few bullets here. And there's one that we haven't, and we're going to contend with it. Uh, but, you know, what I started saying in the beginning, the building department generates a lot of money, and we're losing some money because we can't do a job sufficiently because we have two part-time people. So let's assume some place. Bottom line is we've never said no. Yep. We said go back, back and refigure and it, right. yeah. and okay. nobody's come back other than you. All right. Well, we'll I'll, I'll make sure, and I'll follow up. We'll get a job description. We haven't approved the budget yet. we got yep. both of those I, budgets on hold. I yeah. know. I know. And we'll talk about this tomorrow night, I'm sure, and uh, we will. I will make sure that something gets to the personnel board and goes forward because we, we, I, yeah. I think that we really need to make, you know, I'm going to push to get somebody in there because I can see, you know, the, the detriment of not having those people there. And, and I think it's important, too, to get somebody on board so they can learn the system. I mean, even if we hired, and we did hire a part-time building inspector to help Dick through a, but Dick's knowledge of what goes on in the town and stuff like that is, it saves us so many times because he knows who all the players are. He knows the ins and outs of a lot of things, and he doesn't have to waste a lot of time. You know, he can say, yes, you can do this, and no, you can't, or, you know, sometimes there's a gray area. Um, with a new person, that's that's a big learning curve, you know. I mean, I, I get a little concerned about, and I keep saying this, and, and nobody seems to take it seriously. Where's the money coming from? And Diana's response was, "Well, you know, we we bring all this money in. Well, that's $1. fine, but we're already spending that money. So now what? Obviously, we're spending it. Otherwise, it uh, yeah, sure. would have a surplus. I, I wouldn't money. say that." having more people would generate more income. No, neither way. But it, it would make it more efficient. So, you know, we might not lose out because things are getting done. And like I just said, we're, we're spending probably $1,000 to get a decision done that could have no, been done for $50. And that's not the first time that type of thing has happened, you know? Speaking to that, um, we, the person from FERCOG prepared a checklist for each of the processes that she went through. Mm -hmm. Reviewing. Do we have that? Are you talking about Pat Smith? Yes. Do we have her checklist that she went through and reviewed A&R's, site plan review? We I would have all that information from her. Yes, but I, we have that in our bylaws, anyways. And what you know. So a it, checklist that you have, you can just. Well, why do we have to pay twelve thousand? We have a solo checklist also. The the, re, the reason we're paying the money is instead of paying a, a secretary that is getting you know fifteen to twenty dollars an hour, we're paying a lawyer four hundred dollars an hour. Now whether that lawyer sits down and does it or he has his twenty dollar <laughs> or does, but we're going to get billed the four hundred dollars an hour. Trust me. And I, and I know, and I see it, but it, that's, that's what's happening, you know? Well, Pat, I get enjoy, yeah. enjoy Florida. I don't, I don't want to keep you guys. I just, I just wanted to tell you this. Uh, next week, we will right? talk about it tomorrow night, and <laughs> I'll bring something back Not to you. Not my dreams, even. <laughs> Did appreciate your input. Okay. Besides, I don't mind staying here for four hours. It's warmer here than it is at home. <laughs> Put some wood have... on the fire, for God's no. sakes. Come on. You guys want to uh, make a motion to adjourn? Yeah, we just, get it. Are we, meet, are, we meeting, are we meeting next week? Yes. Same yes. time, same well, station? Yes. Tuesday, Tuesday 6th. Tuesday 6th. The 12th at 6th. Yes. If I'm here not here on time, just start without me. <laughs> I'll call you.
What are you going to call me? So the yes. motion was made by you, John, and somebody seconded Who seconded it? I'll take a second. I don't care. Okay. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It's unanimous. Six zero zero. So you got three yeah. weeks. You're off. Okay, John. Have a good Thank trip. you. Skip, I do have a question.